Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. The Bible makes us to understand that Peter was being bound in prison and while the disciples prayed, an angel came. And as they walked, the doors began to open out of their own volition. No one compelled it. The doors began to open until the last door opened and the angel left Peter totally free and liberated. I believe him. I believe him. I believe him. Lord, I believe you. I'm a believer. There's no room for doubts tonight. I believe you. If I didn't believe, I wouldn't be here. I believe. I believe. I believe. My faith is alive. I believe. There's nothing you cannot do. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe in the name of the Lord Jesus. Parosa I believe. I believe. I believe. I'm excited about this miracle service because of the things that the Lord is going to be doing. Jesus be praised. I trust that in the short time we have to spend in his presence that he will so he will leave a mark in your life tonight. That's my desire. Believe me friends, the Bible says Blessed is she that believes. For unto her there shall be a performance. Mary said, how shall these things be? How shall it be, O God? He said, the power of the highest shall overshadow you. It's not by power. It's not by might. There is an activity of the spirit that defies explanation. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yahweh. Yahweh, you are bigger than what people say. in this place. I see angels inside and outside responding to the worship. I see angels for when I came to you I did not come with the excellence of speech but in the demonstration of power that your faith would not be grounded upon the wisdom of men but in the power of God. Hear me, friends. I see angels. My God. Tonight's meeting will truly leave a mark in your life. My 
mighty angels, warring angels, angels of worship, angels of favor, angels of restoration. Now don't you think I'm just talking? I also see angels holding vials of oil, holding vials of oil to anoint you to a new dimension. Believe it, I see angels with vials of oil. For the Bible says it shall come to pass on that day that the burden shall be lifted from off thy neck. The yoke shall be taken and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The presence of God is mighty. I sense the stirring of the waters. For when the waters is stirred, there will be a release. In the glory. I'd like you to get ready. There's a strong anointing and the power. Hey! I see miracles. that when the Holy Spirit comes and anoints men, there are certain things that will happen. Hear me. The Lord is going to, I don't know why God is starting this way tonight. The Lord is going to start by imparting what I hear my spirit called insight. I know you may not understand. It's what the Bible calls a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Believe me. Insight. For he made two great lights and he made one to rule in the day and another to rule in the night. When that light comes into your spirit, you will rule in the day and you will rule in the night. Hear me, hold on. I'm going to raise a chant in the spirit. The Lord gave it to me as a mystery. And when I raise this chant, the power of God will come rushing. Many of you will literally enter into realms of prophetic insight. Please let me have those people as it happens inside and outside. i like you to get ready. Insight, strange order of insight in the spirit. Please believe it. Believe it. Hey! Hey! Inside, outside. The rain, inside, outside. The rain of the spirit of revelation. Hakobere ketaya, hakabariye mosobaya. Neba baba bese kya, mara baba bosa. Neba si kabaya rara. Neba 
Restoration unto you. Come, madam. The Lord says, I bring you into a new season. I cause a restoration. The power of God is upon you. By the Spirit, now take it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Causing you to walk in new realms of supernatural insight. Even by the Spirit. For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Let me tell you, enough is enough. Whatever Satan has taken tonight, tonight I prophesy, even by the spirit, that the Lord is returning a sevenfold resolution. Hallelujah. The Lord is healing cancer right now. If you have any case of cancer, I don't care what kind of cancer, inside and outside, breast cancer, all kinds of cysts and growths, I like you to get set right now. 
I'm about to release the power of God, it will not, you will not recover. You will be instantly healed. I like you to get set. Get set right now. He said, For as I spoke, I declared as he spoke unto me, and there was a rattling sound. Right now, in the name of Jesus, cancer inside and outside. Go, go, go. Every trace of cancer, I command you to go. I see someone with a cancerous problem with your bone or something. I command you to be healed now. Now, cancer inside and outside. Cancer in the name of the Lord Jesus. I command cancer be healed. Check yourself right now. Check yourself. Check yourself right now. Check yourself right now. Every trace of cancer be gone. Hallelujah. Every kind of blood infection. Every kind of blood infection, whether genotype, blood group, any sickness that is related to the blood, HIV, HIV, whatever it is, listen. I want you to know that the Bible says, Wherefore God had so highly exalted him, don't take her away, the power of God is still strong upon her, strong and strong upon her. It says, and has given him a name that is above every other name. At the mention of that name, he said, every knee, every knee shall bow of things in the heavens, of things in the earth, and of things under the earth. He said, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. I want to challenge every blood condition. That's what I hear my spirit. Hakaparasi bakabosha. Right now by the spirit I command HIV Be healed in the name of Jesus Hepatitis Be healed now In the name of Jesus Hepatitis Be healed The power of God is touching hepatitis people Hepatitis By the spirit of God there is a strong influence of his spirit in this place hepatitis be healed in the name of Jesus every genotype SS AS we change it now in the name of Jesus receive it now in the name of Jesus we change it by the authority of the king in the name of Jesus. I hope you believe what is happening here. The Bible says, Blessed is she that believes. Let me tell you something. There is a kingdom that is superior to this one. There is a kingdom. There is a system. That's why we took our time to teach on the cities of the kingdom. I'm standing not as Joshua Selman, but as touching the authority of the king and the kingdom I represent. He said, for I am a man under authority. And I say unto one, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. I stand under the authority of the king. And once again I declare, SS, AS, shame hey. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sickle cell anemia, leukemia. I command to heal in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every sickle cell, AA, AS, SF, go, go. There is an anointing in this place. Go, go. By the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Many of you have been oppressed by demons in your sleep. Some of you hear voices. Oh, it's time for them to leave now. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
there are people that have suffered from influences of demons it's always my joy to cast out devils he said and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils there's someone coughing seriously outside the power of God is coming upon you bring the person in from demonic influences it's coughing seriously now I command every demon every principality every power go 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 be free every demonic manipulation be free I cast you out of her come out of her now come out come out come out come out Come out inside and outside. Every demonic manifestation. Come out by the authority of the king. Be free. 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 Now. Be free. Be free, thou devil. Be free. Let God's people go. Be free. Be free. Be free. You cannot reign over her life. I see you in the spirit. Leave her now. You understand the authority. Leave her now. I see you in the spirit. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus. There's still one more person outside. I'm seeing in the spirit. There's still one more person outside. I'm seeing in the spirit. Every influence of Satan over your life is leaving. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There's someone outside. Please, those of you outside, lift up your hands. Satan, I command you, be gone from those outside now in the name of Jesus for there is one person I see in my spirit and the Lord brings you out by the instruction of the Holy Spirit we declare release of angels let that one person come forth now in the name of Jesus no demonic influence it shall not rain be free be free be free be free let the person come be free be free for you shall not have a place I stand as touching the king you will not hide in her you will not hide in her come out in the name of Jesus come out in the name of Jesus come out out devil I challenge you as touching the authority of the king come out of her Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hear my spirit destroy habits. God is going to break men free from habits right now. Paul said the things I would want to do, I do not find myself doing them. And the things that I do not want to do, I find myself doing them. He said, oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? But he said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. 
who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit he said for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath set me free from the law of sin and death challenges habits the Bible says sin then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses he said let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and that we run with perseverance the race that is set before us so right now I pray by the power of the highest Jesus the Christ himself I command habits every kind of habit masturbation drunkenness all kinds of demonic habits whatever does not represent the character of the kingdom go now in the name of Jesus go 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 go, go. Go, 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 I break you free, go, inside and outside, you are free, I break you free, worry and fear, go, 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 the Lord is touching people, worry and fear, go, Stephanie, where Stephanie come? I don't know what it is, but the Lord says I should set you free. And I set you free. There is an authority, and it's the authority of the king. You are free, totally free, totally free. In the name of the Lord Jesus totally free by the spirit of God hallelujah where are your sisters are they here Hilda and the rest this is not just you please where are they bring them if you belong to her family you are related are they here please come I don't know what it is but the Lord says to set them free to set them free to set them free please hold your hands together I don't know what it is, but the Lord says, set them free. Set them free. And now in the name of Jesus, let the fire come upon you. Now, be free by the Spirit of God. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. In the name of Jesus, be free. Be free. You are free. Totally free. Totally free by the Spirit. Totally free by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Asa. I don't know why God is doing this. Is your sister here? And anyone related to you, please come quickly. We're hurrying up. We have to be out of here as soon as possible. That's why this meeting was put together to set men free. God is emancipating people. Please hold your hands together. For the Lord sets you free. That's what I hear in my spirit. The Lord sets you free. I sense an anointing coming upon you. And the Lord says, set them free. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I set you free right now. I set you free right now. I declare by the power of the highest that you are free. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, be free. I see like a box going round and round both of you. I command you are free now now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you are set free in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah your son name is Ezekiel son name Ezekiel 
Please listen attentively now as the Holy Spirit calls out people. Your son name is Ezekiel. Where is that person inside and outside? Your son name is Ezekiel. When you get the person, let them come. There is a word for them. Ezekiel. Hallelujah. I'm seeing something in someone's head. I don't know if it's a brain tumor or something. Do we have anyone here with something that has to do with I mean from the hospital. They've told you something. I don't know what it is, but I see a white substance in someone's I don't know what it is, an injury, whatever it is. Do we have someone like that? Please come quickly. Ali Bosch. Sorry about the light, you'll be back in a minute. Above Lord sets you free. You believe that? You believe that? This is not all. This is not all. The Lord is communicating to you. Please let's hurry up. There's no room to waste time. We have to be really, really fast about this. Hallelujah. As I pray for you, I want you to believe that the Lord will set you free. Are you listening to me? Believe that the Lord will set you free. Let me start with mommy. In the name of Jesus, I challenge whatever issue it is, be made whole now. In the name of Jesus, be made whole even by the Spirit. In the blessed name of Jesus Christ. Hold my hands. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Just look at me. Keep your eyes fixed on me. Come out of him now in the name of Jesus. Light is shining in the darkness. Come. Jesus is Lord. Just keep your eyes fixed on me. In the darkness, Jesus. I set you free now. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, I command total, total wholeness to you. Receive it now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive it now. Perfection. I release it to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Perfection in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Perfection in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Perfection in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Perfection in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. man on a stretcher looks like um, is a man from Benway State or so on a stretcher being sick if that is a case that you relate with I like you can come as a man on a stretcher from Benway State is that correct who oh, please can we have a mic hallelujah who is that to you just 
He's an elderly man in the village. He's from Benway State. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You've I've been been trusting God for his healing. Yes, sir. And you've prayed about it again and again. Yes, sir. The Lord brings healing to him right now. Yes, Can you receive for him? Yes, All right, lift up your hands. Lord, let it flow. Now, receive it to him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We command perfection and wholeness even by the Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Agnes, your name is Agnes, your name is Agnes, do we have any Agnes here, I'm hearing Agnes, please if we call your case, I'd like you to hurry up and, and let's save time, hallelujah, are you the only one, the only one bearing the name Agnes? Because I see more than one person in the vision that the Lord shows me. Agnes. Hallelujah. She's not the only one. The Lord is still telling me she's not the only one. Why are you staying back? Please, when we call the case, hurry up. Hallelujah. The Lord says, I should tell you, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. He said, for behold, I do a new thing. Behold, I do a new thing. That's what God is saying, I should tell you, behold, I do a new thing. Especially over your family, the Lord is doing a new thing. Over their finances, they've gone through lots of challenges. Is, does that make sense to you, what I'm saying? Is that correct? Hallelujah. God is saying, I'm stepping in in a way that um, will cause many to wonder and is bringing perfect restoration even by his spirit hallelujah father confirm your word in the name of the lord jesus christ confirm your word by the power of the holy spirit hallelujah god bless you please go back um your father is a your father is a businessman i see him holding cartons he does any business that relates to maybe packaging or goods someone here your father is a businessman i see a man holding a carton i don't know what that means but something that relates to that is there anyone please very quickly your father is in business what does he do is the mic is down he sells motorbikes How about you? He sells goods. He sells goods yes. in a carton. Yes, sir. Did he lose anything? Yes, sir. He lost his company. He lost his company. Yes, the Lord says, I should tell you that he is restoring and he will overturn. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yes. The Lord says, I should tell you that he is restoring. He will overturn and he's going to restore. You believe that? I see him holding a carton. The Lord is going to restore even by his spirit. You believe that? You believe that both of you lift your hands even as you receive from your um, family members. Hold on. Look at me, my dear. Did your father pick up a quarrel with anyone? You may not know. But it's a serious... Um, I see that there's an issue between your father and someone. You received... Please, let the mic be on. Can technical people can hear. I just received a call today about uh, 10 a.m. in the morning. My 10 a.m. in the morning? Yes, my oh. mom called me. That's all, because my dad is going for a counselorship post. So that the young man walked up to him and I said, he's going to deal with him. That he's just looking at him. He doesn't know where to start with him. Yes, I, I, see, I see your father will quarrel with someone and I hear conspiracy. Conspiracy. But you must also tell your father... What fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? That's God's word for your father. And what communion has light got to do with darkness? For he that breaks the hedge, the serpent will strike. Tell your father, he must walk in total righteousness to see God's result. But Lord, we pray that you preserve the father. And for you, I command and I decree that the restoration is perfect and is permanent in the name of the Lord Jesus. God bless you. Hallelujah. see God restoring um, a Kaduna family 
You're from um, the southern part, Zango Kataf, specifically. Now, hold on. Don't just jump out because you're from there. There are many people, I believe, that are from here. Um, you're four in your family. That's what God shows me. You're four in your family. And um, I see that one of you in the family has had a, a recurrent disease or something like that. Please, who is that? If this fits the word for you, I'd like it to come out now. A family uh, from Kaduna. The Lord is giving. This is very specific. You can't guess if it's you. If it's not you, just sit back. Hallelujah. Four in your family. One is sick from Zangon Kataf. So, hallelujah. Do we have anyone like that? The Lord wants to minister to that family. You're the one. Please keep the mic on, technical. Let the mic remain on. It's Gloria. She had to travel with her family. Oh, she had to travel, but, but that's, that's, that that's, that's, yes, I see that, um, okay, well, I'm aware that her dad is sick, and, um, but then God is bringing a restoration for the family. God is restoring, and, um, I see, I see like, um, an earthquake, that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing right now an earthquake. You see that too? I wrote it in my book. Is yes. There? That's what I'm seeing. An earthquake and uh, a disaster. But the Lord averts it by His Spirit. The Lord averts it by His Spirit. Hallelujah. Can you stand in for her? Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that by the Spirit and the authority of the King, standing in for her, we command that restoration through you to her right now. Receive it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Barista is not around. I wish he were around because there is a word that the Lord gives me for him. I hope that when we meet we'll be able to communicate it to him. I see an elderly woman. Um, you are not among those in front here but you're an elderly woman you came you are the back um you've suffered you've had pains in your back serious back pain please who is that i'm seeing an elderly woman she suffered serious back pain and you've been saying lord i'm coming with an expectation oh yes he is ready and willing to heal for he is able more than able to accomplish Hallelujah. I'm hearing Rose. Is there any one of you who is Rose or you're related to anybody called Rose? Rose. Is there anyone? I'm hearing the name Rose. Rose. I don't know what God wants to do with the name Rose, but my mom is suffering from a bad pain right now, and my elder sister's name is Rose. I didn't know there are so many people with the name Rose. The Lord just gave me the name Rose. I love the intelligence of the spirit. For it is not by power, it's not by might, but by the spirit of God. All the ladies rose, please lift your hands. There will be the breath of the highest upon you. And it will set you on fire for the king. At the count of four, the power of God will come strong upon the ladies with the name Rose. One, two, three, four. Ladies with the name Rose. And in 
impartation upon you even by the Spirit. Strong impartation upon you. Strong impartation upon you. Even by the Spirit. For one of you, you are being healed of a menstrual crisis. It goes forever. Goes forever. Hallelujah. Back pain. My, my stomach is very hot. Right now? Yes. No, when I came here, I was feeling, yes, I was feeling it. But later on, I feel it very hot inside. Yes. Is the anointing of the Spirit upon you? Please hold my hands, madam. Let the back pain go. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let the back pain go. The power of God is coming strong upon you. Back pain. Just back here. Not loose. Just hold my hands, madam. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I challenge that pain. Go. Right now, in the name of Jesus, be gone. The power of God is flowing through you. Be gone in the name of Jesus. So we pray for you. Check yourself. Check yourselves. All the roads you can go back. Check yourselves. I see one of you being healed um, from something that has to do with your spine. One of you is healed. Back pain. The side to the back. By the, the back. okay, by the side. The side and the back. Mommy, the power of God sets you free. Oh, because of your generosity, the power of God sets you free. In the name of Jesus, the power of God sets you free. Every pain, I command you to disappear right now by the power that is in the name of Jesus. You are made whole right now in the name of Jesus. You are standing in for your mother. She has back pain. Where exactly? In the name of Jesus, I take authority over that back pain. Be made perfected right now. In the name of Jesus, perfection, given by the Spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a heart condition. Um, someone has a problem with the heart condition. It's been long. It's been, you are aware of it. You've been told growing up a heart situation. Please, who is that? You came here full of expectation. It's time for the Lord to set you free. A heart condition. What's what's the situation? Um, they call it. Um, it's been since three hundred level first semester. Since hundred level, I've been having it, but then I can't remember. The anointing the of the spirit is strong on you, yes, sir. <laughs> the power of God is so strong on you. You are standing. On hold now, and I know that there are angels all around. Hallelujah! The Lord is setting you free. What's it called again? Sorry. This, this, this. That's all right. Look at me. Just look at me. The Lord will set you free right now. You believe that? Please come. He'll touch you. It's not Joshua Selma. He'll touch you. And oh, hey, what what your, out of him now in the name of Jesus. Soul. Perfection by the Spirit, something perfection that has a vision. Go now, now, I know Jesus Christ that be free by the power of the Holy Spirit. You also have a heart for you. Go, come out of heart, be free now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You've been suffering asthma, lay your hands on our chest for me. Asthma, go. Holy 
serious with the Lord. The Lord calls you by this meeting tonight into a place of intimacy. You cannot mix fresh water and salt water. It's time for you to go all out for God. You want me to pray for you? Yes, sir. That the Lord will put a hunger for his word in you? Yes, sir. I'd like to pray for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray a hunger in him. Let an anointing come upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ, set him on fire for you. You will never be the same again in the name of Jesus Christ. My uncle is going to India for operation. Operation? Yeah, in his heart. And it's like they implanted a clock or so inside. It's always ticking when you're close to him. You hear it ticks. A clock? By the doctors? As in you hear the heart oh, it, ticking. It, yeah. Oh, a clock, a clock in his heart. Yeah. By who? That's not how God designed him. Um, okay. Bible says, whatever has not been planted by my father will be uprooted. Lord, we take authority over every planting. We abolish it now by faith in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Perfection for your uncle in the name of Jesus. Christ. The doctor could not predict what it was. Hold on, sorry? The doctor could not predict what, the, what was exactly wrong with me, but he was like, it was asthma. Asthma caused there was um, symptoms asthma. of asthma, but at the same time he was confused if it was asthma or not. Doctors are wonderful people, but you see, there is only so much they can do, and it's not their fault. But look at me, just shout Jesus once as loud as you can. Jesus! <laughs> That's the name that is above every other name totally free by the spirit of God totally free by the spirit of God you are for heart condition no in case of my uncle your uncle what's wrong with him they say that an insect or a worm in his heart you see how wicked satan is for, for many of you who just laugh and think satan is your friend let me tell you something there is no goodness in him Satan is so wicked. How can an insect, or what do you call it, an insect, in your uncle's heart? What kind of thing is that? You believe he's going to be healed right now? You're standing in for him. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I command, lay your hands on your chest. Amen. See, the power of God is strong on you. See your hands. You're standing in for him. Just breathe in and out three times. Just do it. Breathe in and out. The power of God comes on you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My dear, what's wrong? Asthma. Asthma. You have asthma? Okay, um, we're going to pray for the asthmatic patient before I give the ministers a room to just minister and then we'll pray. Every one of you is going to be touched by the power of God tonight. Asthma. But since you came out, the Lord responds to your faith. Um, you're going to be healed right now and you check yourself, okay? My dear, please lay your hands on her chest if you will. Look at me. Open your eyes. Don't miss your miracle. You don't need to meditate. Two of us should not pray. Just watch. I'll do the prayer. Okay? Uh, look at me. Just breathe in and out. Just do what I'm telling you to do. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out again. Do it one last time. <laughs> You're free now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Totally free. Even by the Spirit of God. What do you have? I actually just remembered my cousin now. Your cousin? Yes, sir. Okay, what's wrong with him? She is uh, oh, suffered. Huh? She has suffered uh, of this heart disease for the past uh, three years now. Thirty-three years? No, three years. Oh, three years. She has been coming to Shika all okay. the way from home. Okay. And uh, last year, she had to travel to India, India. two times for, for surgery. Surgery. Okay. But she went there, and they couldn't discover exactly what was wrong with the heart then. You're standing in for her. Let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, perfection over her heart right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, perfection by the Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What's wrong with you? Asthma. You have asthma. Okay, I'm going to pray for asthmatic people. You don't have to come out. But since how long has it been? Over one and a half years. When? Two years ago. Two years. How old are you now? You are 14. 
For the past 12 years, you've had asthma. Two. Oh, for the past two years, he's had asthma. Okay. As well, let me pray with you. You believe Jesus will heal you? You believe it? Lay one hand on your chest if you will. Jesus, you are the healer. Perfection. Perfection. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Perfection. Hallelujah. If you have asthma, lift your hands inside and outside. Asthma. If you are suffering from any kind of asthmatic condition, please lift your hands. I will pray for you right now. Asthma. Asthma. It's time for you to receive. I hope you get serious with what we are doing. Asthma. I like all of you to say after me, Jesus, I receive. Say after me, Jesus, I receive. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I set you free from asthma right now. Be healed. Begin to breathe in and out. Test yourself. Check yourself right now. Asthma, you are healed totally, totally. Not a gradual recovery, totally instant healing from asthma. Drop your hands down and check yourself. Hallelujah. Where's a Jimmy? Come. Hallelujah. Um, there's someone here, you have an eye condition. You're Igbo. I think your name is Emeka. Emeka and Wafo. The eye condition, it causes pain to go from here all the way. The pain starts from here and it rises all the way to here. Please come out. God wants to heal you. Your name is Emeka. Emeka and Wafo. There's another person. You have a kidney condition. You have a kidney condition. You used to have um, supernatural experiences at night. Like you see an angel. They told you your kidney was damaged. Yes, they told you your kidney was damaged and you don't know what to do about it. It's a critical condition. It's, it's almost like it's terminal. And you used to see an angel. And you see the angel holding, holding kidneys. God says I should give you. God says I should give you the kidney. I see a mother. Sorry, I see a grandmother. Your daughter has fibroid. And she has not been able to give birth because of that fibroid. She has diagnosed that the fibroid is occupying her womb. Please come out. God wants to heal you. A grandmother, your daughter has fibroid. She's married. But she has not had a child for a while. There's, I see like cobwebs in her womb. That's the reason why. Okay, you don't know it's fibroid. But she has not given birth for a while. Please, whoever that person is, please come out. And then, I don't know, God gave me a, a prophecy for China. China. I heard God say capital flight. I heard God say he is concerned for China. Capital flight is going to affect their currency. I don't know when it's going to be, but it's going to be serious. And I hear God say he's concerned for China. Those are, then there are some people, your ministerial calls. Your ministerial calls. Your ministerial calls, a prophetic call is upon you. I will allow those who operate in the prophetic to pray about it. But God wants to launch people into their ministerial calls. You will begin to experience serious angelic ministration. Serious angelic ministration. So God wants to launch you into that tonight. Emeka. Okay, you are the Emeka. What's wrong with you? Shortage of blood. Shortage of Blood. Of blood, yes. shortage of blood, and what else? Why, once I have shortage of blood, it soon will just stop. What? When I have shortage of blood, it soon will just come. What's your son name? Wafo. Oh, Wafo, yes. American Wafo. That's what I saw. That's what do I know you? No. I've been seeing it since morning. My brother dreamt about you, and he told me God was going to do that. When God said the American Wafo, I said, Wow, that means you are evil. God said, No, it's a American Wafo. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you set him free. I overhaul your body from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. You are made whole by the power of God. 
you are made whole you are made whole you are made whole you are made whole by the power of god you are made whole in the name of jesus free in jesus name amen then the grandmother that has a okema they said is toilet infection okay okay she, she married, she has not given birth. She has not given birth. I see it like cobwebs. At first I thought it was fiber, but I just saw it like cobwebs, like a mess in her tummy. I see God putting... <laughs> Amen. <laughs> wow. Father, I thank you. Father, thank you. I see God putting twins. <laughs> I was afraid to say, but I see God putting twins. Amen. When you see two fetus in the room, that's twins, Abby. Yes. Amen. Amen. God Miracle God babies. The names of the twins. What? God gave me the names of the twins. Oh, beautiful. Ah, if you are so this is. Father, we seal it in the name of Jesus. We thank you for those children who fulfill destiny. We set her free in the name of Jesus. Reconstructive surgery. We set her free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Enjoy the labor over your daughter in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. are you standing here for? The eye. Okay. Father, set him free in Jesus' name. Set him free in Jesus' name. We bring you the kingdom of God in your life and your body. You are made whole in Jesus' name. That foul spirit go. Life come. Eyesight whole in the name of Jesus. Amen. Then fibroid. Thank you, Jesus. You are free in Jesus' name. Prophetic ministry. Don't please just When the worship was on, the Lord, I saw an angel of the Lord releasing an anointing upon you, even concerning prayer and the prophetic. And the Lord said, He's going to speak through you. The Lord said, He's going to open your eyes and give you a see anointing again. Father, thank you for your life. Manasseh. Oh, yeah. I, there's a lady by the name Abigail. Can I have Abigail here? Abigail. 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 There is something that's. Abigail. Abigail. Are you Abigail? Okay, come. I don't know who among you, but I know there is somebody among you that has, your family has a, a problem with debt. Amen. Your father is, is there's a work your father did somewhere, the money has been held, is not paid, and I had the Lord say he's going to restore back the money. Amen. And I don't know who among you has that, that has to do with debt. Amen. The Lord says he's going to pay it. And also you over there, you. Yeah. When we're praying, I see the Lord doing the deliverance in your life and your family come. I see the Lord doing a deliverance in your life, even breaking you away from the ignorances that there, some things that have been stopping you from getting married. Hope you hope you hear me. You prayed that very prayer before you came and I want the Lord to encounter you. Father, thank you, Lord, in our life. And I command that every every demonic activity against our life is broken in the name of Jesus. Then also when we're praying, mommy. Mommy, I don't know whether that was connected to your daughter, but I saw an angel of the Lord doing a surgery in you. Huh? Yeah. I, I saw an angel of the Lord doing a surgery in you. Yeah. And he said it's going to I see the Lord taking away something, something from the body. And I also see the, saw the Lord doing a cleansing in the blood. Yeah. And the Lord said it's going to he's going to perfect that in your dream this night. Amen. Amen. I saw I saw the angel of the Lord doing a surgery Amen. in you. And the Lord said, Jesus. And the Lord said, He's going to perfect it. Amen. You give me, let me, let me pray for you. Receive it Father, in Jesus' name. Pardon? I receive it in yeah. Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord. It's done in the name of Jesus. It's done in the name of Jesus. And also, Father, concerning the promotion in the family, concerning the promotion that I've been trusting you, Lord, Lord, the door is open in Jesus' Amen. name. The door is open. When I was praying there, the Lord showed me a vision again for the second time concerning uh, a prominent uh, businessman in the country by the name Dangote. 
I saw the angel of the Lord. Should I say it? Amen. <laughs> it's going down. Yeah, going down. And and I saw I saw him directly connected to the present Islamic Bank policy. And I saw him doing a donation, and that made the Lord the Lord is going down. Let me just summarize it. Great down. Hallelujah. Okay, so Jamfa, what did you see about them? You can take it from there. Okay, for that, yeah, I see like three people standing behind you, and there has been the voice of accusation saying you are guilty. I see certain warfare that you have had to experience over the years, challenges too that has affected your health recurrently over the years. And God says He wants to bring deliverance to you today. God says He's not only touching mommy, but He's bringing a total work to your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I release perfection to your bloodstream, to every fiber of your being. I command that you are healed and you are made perfect tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Just a moment. While this is going on, if you've not written your prayer request, let's save time. Please, very quickly, ushers, begin to take the prayer request inside and outside. Now is the time. Your prayer requests. Please, if your friends and loved ones send them through SMS or something, you can just copy it. Let's have it quickly, quickly. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Jamfa. I heard the Lord give me the name Jimo, and I see that your mom has been having a particular sickness, an infirmity that she has carried for many years, and it has been a source of great concern to your family. The Lord gives me the name Jimo. Your mom has an ailment that she has carried for many years, and it has been a source of great concern to your family. I don't know where you are. Just lift up your hands and come. The Lord wants to bring healing. The Lord is giving the name Jimo. Jimo. Is Jimo in this place? Her eyes. Her eyes. One of her. Yes. One of her eyes. Yes. yes. Lord, I pray over Jimo in the name of Jesus. Command healing to his mom's sight in the name of the Lord Jesus. Healing perfection to her. What's okay? I know you, Jimo. What is it that's wrong with your mom? Nothing at all. Okay. That means you're not the one the Lord is speaking about. He's the one. Hallelujah. The Lord says, I should tell you that the work that you are doing right now, that you're not going to do it for every time. God says, shortly. He said, the business and the things that He has been speaking to you about, He says, shortly. You have to leave that job. For God says, do not step out until it's the appointed time. Hallelujah. Pastor Jakes, I remember like two years ago, the Lord gave me a word for you on your birthday that he was taking you out of Zara to a new land and a strange land that you have never been before. God says, this is a time that is going to multiply you in that land. God says, he's ushering your ministry into a new season. And God says, it is expected of a steward that he be found faithful. I see many coming to you and giving unto you. And God says he's setting you to father many, but he expects that you be found faithful. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Mr. Yums, I see you standing in an office. I don't know what you were doing before you came back to school. But I see you now. God is showing me that as you leave this place, you're going to have your business. You're going to have to do with a place where you walk, I see the one-story building through the staircase. I see you walking around that office. Where you walk before coming to school, is this the description? Please talk to me. Come. Where you walked before coming back to school, is this the description of the place? Exactly. I don't even know where you, you... That was in Lagos or wherever, but this is what God is showing me. And God is saying, as you go back, I see increase coming. I see expansion coming. I see you going beyond that one office and taking the whole floor. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Apostle Sai talking about earthquake. There's so much that the Lord gave me earlier out of this morning that I wrote. And I saw like a mighty wind. And I saw the ground open. And God told me that it's going to be one of the most devastating natural disaster that this generation has seen and I see it coming in the next few months. I see it cutting across somewhere in North America and somewhere in Asia also. 
and the Lord shows me in a vision I saw like a chart like a chart and I saw like a price chart and God was showing me that in the new year that we're about to enter there's going to be a sudden increase in price of goods and, and commodity in this country there's going to be an unusual increase that you have not experienced in recent times and it will run through the year and, but God shows me the chart coming down again as it rises to the peak, I see it coming down. So even though it's going to be a difficult time for many, things are going to be expensive. But God promised that he will watch over his people. Hallelujah. Some of the prophecies that God is, is giving me, they may not sound conventional for this moment. But from the early part of this year, I gave a prophecy about the governor of Cardinal State and the governor of Plateau State. And in the vision that God showed me about the governor of Plateau State, God showed me and God said there was an attempt of assassination coming upon his life. And I didn't really understand. I thought that was just going to be physical. And then until recently, Apostle told me that he's been out of the country on a serious health challenge. And last night while I was praying, I saw like a spirit of death stood by his side. And God was asking that I pray and rebuke that spirit. I know that God is calling on the church to pray so that he will come back alive. We do not say these things. We are not political mouthpiece. We are just saying the things that the Lord is, is showing us to speak. And I see someone in this place, somebody related to you, like in your family, somebody you lost somebody. Not to say the person died, but the person got missing throughout this, from the early part of this year. I see that happen. The person got missing a loved one, a family member that you've been looking for, particularly a lady. Where is that person? Just lift up your hands. A lady. It happened this year. A lady related. My dad's friend. Your dad's friend. Okay, let me pray for you. But the Lord shows me a lady that has been missing from the early part of this year. And the Lord shows that this lady is going to come back. She's going to come back in the name of Jesus. We we'll declare that wherever she is, we we'll declare a release for her. I will command her to come back home in the name of the Lord Jesus. I see someone you have in your dream, you experience as though your head is shaved. In your dream, you see your head shaved. It's a lady and the Lord is telling me that it's a spell that the enemy is casting over you, even against marriage. Where are you? Just lift up your hands. I want to declare over you. Lord, I pray. I pray, I see in, in your dream, you see your head completely shaved. I declare that that spell is broken over your life. And I declare total liberty to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For the people that God, that Apostle prayed for at the beginning... I saw something. God, God was setting you from mindsets. So your mindsets have been conditioned since you were born. All those ladies. And he said one of the characteristics of your mindset is that you have come to believe that a woman is supposed to be the breadwinner by default. That's what God was saying specifically. God says I should tell you categorically that it was not so from the beginning. And God says he's empowering you so that your reality will be different. And it's, they were not the only ones. God is releasing a grace upon all the ladies in this place who have been characterized that, by that mindset that a woman is supposed to be the breadwinner. And you are, you are prepared for it. You have actually made plans, strategies, business plans, business strategies. God says it wasn't so from the beginning and he's setting you free in the name of Jesus. Then there's a second group of people God is releasing upon you unusual grace for creativity. I've been sensing that since since three o'clock. Unusual grace for creativity. What the Bible calls witty inventions. In fact, it's the spirit that was upon Bezalel. I see it in the IT. I see it in hospitality and catering. And I see it in the media. Unusual creativity. We would like to pray for you. And lay hands on you and impart that grace to you. Then the last set of people. You've been having dreams for a series of days now. 
and you've been seeing eagles, eagles, eagles. You see mountains, you see eagles. You've been seeing it for a long time now. Mountains, eagles, mountains, eagles. Every time you see in the spirit, that's what you see. And there are other people who have been sensing in the spirit but have not been seeing what they sense. We would like to pray for those people also. If you come out, I'd just like to pray for all the people that are listed. Amen. So those who belong to that category, quickly just come up this way. Wild Jigs ministers, go ahead, sir. Hallelujah. Um, please, if you identify with the name Lami. I heard the name Lami. If you identify with the name Lami, quickly come out, please. If you identify with the name, is that your name or your mother's name? Lami. If you identify hold with on. the name. Um, listen, hold on. I hope you are not just coming out because you want... We are going to pray. Soon we'll enter another session very quickly. And then we'll pray for everybody, okay? We are just talking about those specifically um, that his case concerns. So please don't just feel emotional and come out, okay? All right, if you identify with the name Lamy, please just come this way. The name Lamy. Lamy, right? Okay, your younger sister. I actually have a word for um, Lamy. Praise God. Then, if you have, um, you're having pains here, it's actually pneumonia. Just on your right, your right side. Actually, have received um, healing for that person. If you are that person, quickly come out too. Then, so on with. Presently, you're having. You're having pains on your thigh, right down your right thigh. Even as you were standing worshiping, you had pains on your right thigh. Okay, mommy, that's you. Okay, on your right thigh. Actually, um, received that. The people who migraine, I may not be able to call you out. I know Jangfa mentioned the case of um, people that were losing their hair just while Lizzy, um, Lady raised up her hand. They're actually more than that because I actually saw a flash of it. Hallelujah. I saw a flash of it. So, Lami, where's Lami? Okay. Okay, Lami, um, what I received for you, the Lord said you should share the testimony. Do you understand? The Lord said you should all share the testimony. So I believe the Lord wants to, the Lord is receiving something upon you. He wants to bless you, okay, with something that you share. Are you also Lami? Okay, your younger sister, so I'm just going to quickly pray with you. Then the case is, what is, what did you come up for? Okay, Lami, all right, I'm just going to quickly pray with you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Please, if, if you're having migraine, you may not need to come out. Just put your hands wherever you're having the pain. Just migraine. Your forehead, I felt that too for you. And I felt the healing for you. Then um, people with pains just at the right shoulder. At the right shoulder. You're having a pain there. Just put your hands there. There's no need to come out. Please just put your hand. I'm going to pray with you right now. And the Lord is going to touch you and heal you wherever you are. In the name of Jesus Christ, will you pick every pain, every migraine? I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And every pain on the shoulder, I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please, let's have all the prayer requests. All the prayer requests. Very quickly, please, can we rise on our feet? I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, sing God. Is this all inside and outside ushers? How many of you are here to drop your request? Let me see. Please, we need some ushers. Just let them have it very quickly so that they can. Just lift it up so that you can drop it. We want to pray on the request. Hallelujah. May I request all the servants of God here to just come out as we pray. 
now this is not just a ceremony please listen this is not just a religious ceremony hallelujah god has been so faithful unto us and that this we're not just doing it because we should do it god gave us an instruction to do it and i want you to know that whatever it is that is represented here by the power that is in the name of jesus christ miracles will so erupt from this i like you to believe it please believe it yes you can bring them ushers let's have it quickly hallelujah please come pastor jakes you can come good to see you hallelujah hallelujah now as we pray on this request please instrumentalist i like you to play just you know clash the cymbal give your best and we're going to pray in the spirit i like everyone to join us as you pray in the spirit hallelujah and then we're going to speak over it and release i know that there are impossible cases humanly in this request cases that only god can bring liberty to people but i want you to know that there is a god that sits in heaven he created the heavens and the earth in seven days it will not take him too long to change the situations here there are financial situations represented here marital situations um issues of barrenness and so on and so forth we are going to pray right i like everybody to begin to pray in the spirit please let's come come let's come in this place for like messages pray and make contact Come on, pray inside and outside. This is the time when we get to pray prophetically. We release miracles in the name of the Lord Jesus as representatives of the living Christ. Let impossible situations give way. I see doors being opened in the vision. I see gates being opened by the Spirit.
Hallelujah. My God. Great miracles being released by the Spirit. Father, we pray right now. As the servants of the living God. Commissioned by grace. We're praying on these requests. And Lord, we declare that every situation we presented here will change for good. In the name of Jesus, for your loved ones and for your families, right now you will receive supernatural calls telling you about the eruption of miracles, supernatural miracles, death cancellation by the Spirit, promotions by the Spirit, children by the spirit supernatural marriages in the name of the Lord Jesus healing of terminal diseases admissions into institutions Lord we agree by faith and we establish it in the name of the Lord Jesus hallelujah the last thing we are going to do please let me the servants of Christ I like us to stand there is going to be a stirring of spiritual gifts. We all represent different offices and operation of the spirit. Now I'd like you to believe this is the moment you do not want to miss. Please can we just form a straight line and hold our hands together and lift it up. Inside and outside I'd like you to connect. For apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, evangelists. There will be a supernatural connection of the spirit by faith. This is what the Lord is telling me to do. Hear me, we are going to lift up our voices and stretch our hands towards you. Many of you will encounter levels of power and insight that you have never seen before. You came for miracle service and even among ourselves there will be a transfer of virtue. Take note. Hallelujah. Please let the cymbal not stop. Sir, play the instruments. Can you transpose? Now go ahead and receive. In the name of Jesus. Let there be a release. A release. Inside and outside. Let the prophetic flow come mighty. Let the apostolic flow come mighty. Let the teaching anointing, the office of teachers, all kapari eketebaya, roko shote bakaya, evangelists, be stirred up now, 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 inside and outside. Prophets, arise! I speak to your spirit, apostles. Arise, arise, apostles, arise, pastors, arise, shepherds of the body, arise, in the name of Jesus, arise, shepherds of the body, evangelists, receive the anointing, evangelists, receive the anointing, receive the anointing, receive the anointing, teach us, let there be a release. A separation of the teaching office in the name of Jesus. We decree, receive it, receive it, receive it. Let the healing anointing be said now, now. The healing anointing now. The healing anointing now, now. The healing anointing. The anointing for deliverance. Now, some of you are receiving power for barrenness, 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 the anointing to heal barrenness, receive it, please ushers go out, shake the porodosia, prophetic anointing, receive it, many of you have been called into the ministry of kingdom wealth, receive it now, an anointing for wealth, receive it, receive it, receive it, prosperity anointing, receive it, the prosperity anointing, receive it, receive it, inexplainable, undeniable, prosperity, you will handle the wealth of the kingdom, you will handle the wealth of nations, Many of you said, 
Sosego, Sosego, Sosego. For creativity, for creativity, for creativity, the spirit of Bezalel, I see purple rain falling, purple rain falling, receive it now, creativity, the spirit of Bezalel, creativity, Come up with witty inventions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to speak over your finances. Everybody. Everybody. We are going to speak. I, I'm glad the ministers are holding. Please believe it. This is an unusual miracle service. God is doing strange things. You've heard the prophecies about next year. I didn't tell you. I saw the capital of China been affected and devastated greatly greatly let me tell you the truth we are now sit here the first recession we were criticized for it when we said the recession was coming and we did announce it again that another recession is coming and i'm saying it again another recession is coming but when there was going to be famine in egypt wisdom was given to joseph and a strategy was communicated hallelujah the Bible says when men say there is a casting down He said for seven years you shall save And during the famine you shall step out in that abundance I want to pray for your finances Hear me friends It's not by your knowledge and calculation No, wealth is spiritual Forget about uh, all of this Arrogance of economies that is shaming them Every man who has truly gotten wealth Whether by God's way or Satan's way knows that wealth is spiritual when you see a rich man you say this guy has gone to the native doctor we understand i want to pray for you some of you need to stand in for your loved ones because you know gone are the days when we pretend that this is not an issue it has caused wreck and havoc and damages in families enough is enough as servants of the lord we want to pray for your life you mustn't believe it but if you care the Lord doesn't want you to survive. He wants you to be blessed so that you can advance the kingdom. And here's the scripture the Lord gave me. Let me just read it quickly. I want us to hurry up. Revelation chapter 3. Verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it. For I know that thou hast little strength and hast kept my word and hast not denied my name. I pray right now. I sense an anointing in the name that is above every other name. If I be a servant of the living God, then now I pray, let there be a baptism of supernatural, inexplainable wealth. It's an anointing. I release it. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. 
take it now. It's an anointing. Receive it for your finances. Receive it for your finances, for your families. It's an anointing. Receive it. Take it. It's yours. Receive it. It will impart wisdom. It will impart favor. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear me. There are certain virtues that God has blessed us with as a ministry. And Peter says, such as I have, give I unto you. Hear me with all humility. Any right thinking man seeing the hand of God upon this ministry knows that it's not about us. Anyone who has sense enough, you know that there is a factor and there are spiritual principles. There are certain blessings that God has blessed us with. When God calls a man, there are certain dimensions of graces that are operational. Hallelujah. And I want to pray we want to declare some of these things upon you you will be surprised how these things will change your life please let there be every sense of unbelief kick it out are you listening to me now it's not the time to doubt god is changing someone here god has blessed us with a dimension of his presence his presence many of you will begin to step into unusual levels the Lord told me something some years ago. He says, son, I give you my presence as a gift. My father, I raise a cry. Let the presence, the angel of the Lord's presence that has walked with us, commanding signs, wonders, undeniable manifestations. If God be God, let the angel of the Lord's presence be released towards you in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus the angel of the Lord's presence and Moses said do not send us from here if your presence goeth not with us he said how shall they know that we are a separated people the second is favor the Bible says hear me he said that Esther anointed herself with a particular oil for one year and she walked before King Ahasuerus and suddenly a woman who had no human qualification by the favor of God the Lord calls it the Esther anointing the Lord has given us grace favor we cannot even explain favor we cannot explain Lord in the name of Jesus receive this favor in the name of Jesus strange dimension of favor favor with God favor with man we release it in the name of Jesus let favor follow you from today bringing blessings bringing victory bringing results that you cannot explain favor favor your academics favor your relationship favor your business it's called grace it's called grace receive it in the name of Jesus hallelujah number three the Lord has blessed us with wisdom the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. He said, dear, forget wisdom. He said, and with all thy getting, get understanding. He said, on no hand she shall promote thee. He said, she shall bring a, an ornament of glory upon thy head when thou dost embrace her. He said, does not wisdom cry? By wisdom he founded the earth. And by understanding he said, he established it. Wisdom. Wisdom. My father, I pray that in this October miracle service, let men and women leave this place with an impartation of the spirit of wisdom. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. 
Receive it in the name of Jesus. The spirit of wisdom is yours. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. One of the things that God has blessed us, I call it the spirit of Elijah. Supernatural speed and acceleration. Hear me, friends. I want there is something called speed. The Bible makes us understand that when he, he, he told us, saddle your ass and run, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain but he went back and when he prayed and saw the feast cloud like a feast of the bible says the hand of the lord came upon him he gathered his loins and used his bare foot and began to run and he overtook the chariots of ahas the bible says at a certain time jesus told the disciples to use the last boat and go and they were six hours ahead of him but when he finished praying, he encountered an anointing. He got up and started walking on the water and was almost overtaking them. Let me tell you something. When the spirit of speed comes upon you, you will pursue and you will overtake as though you never experienced a lad. Now, please, I want you to believe it. Oh, I want you to believe it. There are many people who are in their need of restorations in their lives. And for families, and right now we pray in the name that is above every other name. At the mention of that name, we sound an alarm in the realm of the spirit. Receive speed now, now, acceleration, speed, speed in marriage, speed in your job, acceleration. Speed, speed, speed. You will run. You will run. Speed, advancement, acceleration. Hallelujah. One of the things that God has given us is honor. 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 Kingdom honor. The Bible says, because thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness. It said, therefore our God had anointed you with an oil of gladness above your fellows. Lord, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. It's a season to honor your people and to bring them to limelight for the sake of the kingdom. Therefore, I pray right now that everything that has kept you bound such that you cannot come to light, there are families that have been kept bound. Hallelujah. Tonight, the spirit of the Lord is upon us. And with this anointing, I command, let the doors of the prison over families over finances let doors be open in the name of Jesus we call you to a place of honor in the name of Jesus we call you to a place of influence in the name of Jesus receive it for yourself receive it for your loved ones receive it for your family in the name of the Lord Jesus Hallelujah. Something must show in your life for men to know that the Lord lives. Are you listening to me? Something must show in your life. Something must show. That's why you came for this miracle service. Something must show in your life. We want to rebuke the plague of death. Now, please take it serious. When God gives instructions like this, take it very seriously. Hallelujah. We want to take authority over the plague of death. The Bible says when they asked Balaam to go and curse them, when he went, he found out that the ark was positioned in a particular way. He could not curse them. For he said, the shout of a king is in their midst. I declare in the name of Jesus 
the bible said i set before you life and death i set before you blessing and cursing right now we lift up the ban of death over your life and over your family members in the name of jesus no more death no more accidents no more terminal diseases in the name of jesus i don't care what's killing of satan but we are agreeing right now that the hedge of protection comes over your life and over your family how many of you know we need the protection of god in nigeria right now you get up and live peacefully and someone gets up and just causes chaos but we speak upon every one of you for life is a choice and in the name of jesus as a ministry we choose life and we decree and declare that there is life upon you in the name of the lord jesus Christ. no death no death you are worthy worthy of my praise you're the king of kings lord of lords this is our prayer lord let your kingdom reign in my life Adonai 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 of kings you're the lord of lords tonight let your kingdom reign in our hearts Adonai Mountains bow down 
Spirit of God, I feel your touch in my life. Holy Ghost, you are the Spirit of God. You are the Spirit of God. I feel your touch in my life. Holy Ghost, comfort her. Make my life comfortable. Teach her. Teach me all I need to know. You are the Spirit of God. You are the Spirit of God. I feel your touch in my life. Oh, Lord. you are the Spirit of God. You are the Spirit of God. I feel, I feel your, your touch in, in my life. Oh, oh, oh he goes. I will sing of the wonders of your love. I will sing of your love. I will sing of the wonders of your love. I will forever sing your praise. Listen, your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. That's why, your oh Lord, I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. That's why I will forever sing your praise. I will sing, I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. Forever sing your praise, and I will forever sing your praise. Lord, we will forever sing your praise, and we will forever sing your praise. Bless you. Let the name of the Lord be exalted. Blessed is the Lord Most High. Let the bride of the Lord say, Come. We will give you no rest, O Lord, until you inhabit the praises of your people and you turn your Jerusalem into a holy place.
Just soak in his glory for a minute. His mighty presence. God is healing, healing sicknesses. The healing anointing in this place. Shalom, 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 Jerusalem, shalom, 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 shalom. Shalom, 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 Jerusalem. Shalom, shalom. Koinonia, peace be to you. When Messiah comes to take us home, may his praise be found in you. Shalom, shalom. Jerusalem, yeah. I prophesy peace to you. I prophesy peace to you when Messiah comes to take us home. May his praise be found in you. I speak to every storm in this place. Shalom, Shalom, Jerusalem. Peace be to you. Now that Messiah is in this place, he's come to take it away. Let his praise be found in you. I'm prophesying to you. Shalom. Shalom. Koinonia. The bride of Christ. Peace be to you. Peace be to you. Let this be a place of peace. Let it be a place of power. Let it be a place of breakthrough. Let it be a place of intimacy. his name you may not realize what has happened to you
Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. We have come to the end of ourselves. Take over, Jehovah. We have touched the end of ourselves. Take over now, Jehovah. We have come to the end of ourselves. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have come to the end of ourselves. So take over, take over. We have come to the end of ourselves. Take over, take over. We have come to the end of ourselves. Can you personalize it? Take over, Lord. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. We have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We have come to the end of ourselves. the voices. Sing it from your heart. Come on. Take over. Take over. Lord, we have come to the end of ourselves. Take over. When you come to the end of yourself, then you will see his glory. A powerful song of dedication. You will always rejoice when you come to the end of yourself. That's when flesh dies and you release the spirit. Hey, take over, yeah. Lord, we have come to the end of ourselves. Take over, take over. We have come to the end. about to share in this few minutes, I pray from my heart that it will change you and set you on fire. I pray that it will change you. I pray that it will change you and do something remarkable in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's get to the word of God. Bless you. It's good to have everyone around. Make sure you have something to write. Presence of God is mighty in this place. Hallelujah. I want to teach on something very powerful. I want to share with you a very big secret tonight. And for as many who will consider it to be valuable I pray that many years from now it will make you a sign and a wonder because I am aware by now that not everybody is really interested in the things of the spirit just leave her alone hallelujah there will be a lot of impartations tonight because of what I'm about to teach hallelujah I want you to be sensitive Open your eyes 
Will you open your ears and then you'll understand that his presence is here. Open your eyes if you open your ears then you'll understand that the Lord is here. Hallelujah. I want to teach tonight on the price for an extraordinary anointing. Never, never trivialize what you're about to hear. I'm here to preach my heart to you tonight. And I pray that somebody will take this seriously. May this message set somebody on fire. May this message answer the question, somebody's heart. The price for an extraordinary anointing. Hmm. Hallelujah. I've always wondered why certain people in this life seemed to be unusually extraordinary. Hallelujah. Why certain sportsmen were better than others. Why certain musicians and artists were better than others. Why certain preachers, men and women of God. What brought the power and the anointing of the Spirit so mightily upon their lives? When you read through church history, you will see an archive of men that walked like gods upon the earth. Now there were others who did nice, great things, little things here and there, but there were others who were too extraordinary to be neglected. They shook cities single-handedly. There was, there was such a degree of the demonstration of the Holy Spirit upon their lives. Hallelujah. And I made up my mind years ago that my life was not going to be extraordinary. My life was not going to be normal. Sorry. I made up my mind years ago that I was going to live an extremely extraordinary life. Hallelujah. I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, if you have done these things with the people that have gone ahead of us, and yet you said there is a generation that will do more, I want to be that generation. Every time I picked up my Bible and I read the things that the Word of God said would happen, He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he also do and greater works. And I carried my Bible and said, Lord, do you really mean this? Hallelujah. And I began to study the life of extraordinary people. I have spent a major part of my life studying extraordinary people in every area of life. Every area. Finance, ministry, leadership. What made them so extraordinary? Because I don't want to be a mediocre. Jesus was born in a manger. But when he was leaving heaven, there was a crowd to celebrate his departure. And I'm very disturbed, and I must say this, at the complacency that is upon especially preachers in the body of Christ. There is a very low standard that many men and women of God, especially around this country, have set for themselves. There is no pressure to go the extra mile and do amazing things for the kingdom. Hallelujah. When I listen to certain preachers, the presence of God that came out of their lives were amazing. It was compelling. You could not deny that these people knew the Holy Spirit. 
Are you listening to me? Very, very powerful. And one time I listened to William Branham. When I listened to his message, I was shaking. And the Holy Spirit told me, Abel, though dead, yet speaketh. What kind of anointing did men like Elisha carry that although they were dead, a dead body meandered that place and suddenly jacked up. Are there such people in the earth today? Are you listening to me? Am I challenging somebody? For desperate people do desperate things and we're pressing in. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. For desperate people do desperate things and we're pressing on. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. Help me sing. There's gotta be more than this. We are the desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. We are the desperate people. We want more, more, Lord. Cause I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. Listen, there's got to be more than what we are watching on our television. Are you listening to me? There's got to be more than what we celebrate as ministry and power today. There's got to be more. This cannot be all of God. Certain people have become examples to let us know that there are possibilities that are obtained in God. It's just that the standard is high. The Bible says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? He lives in a hill and whoever will climb there will access some things. He said he shall receive a reward from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. I studied Ezekiel 47 and it challenged me. The Bible says out of the east side of the temple a river came out. And he said an angel measured a thousand cubits and it was to my ankles. That's a level. That's a measure of the anointing. But he didn't stop there. He said he measured another thousand cubits and then it was to my knees. And the man would have chosen to stop there, but he said, I will go for more. And he measured a thousand cubits. And it was to his loins. And he said, although this is great, by now you are a celebrity, you are on every television, but he said, there is still more. And the Bible says he measured a thousand cubits. And it was a river. A, an overflowing river. And the Bible says, wherever that river went, the fish that was dead would come alive. Hallelujah. My anthem every time is that there is more. There is more. If you're a lukewarm person who does not have any pressure to press, you won't be my friend. You won't like me. My life will offend you. The price for an extraordinary anointing. I made certain vows with my life. That I was going to leave a mark upon this earth. Before I go to be with the Lord or he comes to find me working. I made up my mind that I was not just going to be that preacher with a nice congregation. And just having people. And join the rat race of preachers fighting themselves and doing things as if the anointing has finished. Quarreling and writing things about them. No! That kind of life is for people who have refused to press higher. Hallelujah. See, let me tell you something. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is God's energy. The anointing is God's ability to do work. Just like in physics, we define energy or we define power as the ability to do work per time. That's the definition of the anointing. The power of the Holy Ghost resident in a man that causes the man to produce extraordinary results 
The Bible says in Isaiah 20, 10, 27, it says, it shall come to pass in that day. Which day? The day you are interested enough to enter that dimension with the Spirit. That the burden shall be lifted from off thy neck and the yoke from thy shoulder. And it shall be destroyed because of the anointing. There are many preachers that go into ministry without the anointing. Many people trying to work for God. Many people trying to be great without the anointing. You have no ministry without the anointing. The anointing of the spirit is God's agency. His ability that can be resident in a man. Causing that man to do extraordinary things. And if that ability is not in you. You cannot pretend it's there when it's not there. Because it speaks. Hallelujah. Every time I watch television. I get blessed, but I get disturbed in my spirit. When I see the satisfaction that is upon men of God as they preach, in my mind I'm saying, is this, was this the whole vision that they saw when they began with God? If no, what happened on the way? And then one time the Lord began to speak to me about the extraordinary anointing. And the Lord told me something that shocked me. He said, son, it is not up to me. It is entirely up to you to determine how far you want to go in the anointing. Many people think it's just God. He brings it whenever he wants. And if God likes you, he will just give it to you. If anybody has preached that to you, I'm telling you right now, right now, that is not true. Psalms 89 says, I have found my servant David. He had to make himself available. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. Hallelujah. Every time we watch extraordinary people. During the Olympic. The attention of the whole world were on a few. Who did extraordinary things. Their age. Their gender. Their race. Their background. Notwithstanding. The world has always stood in honor of extraordinary people. Ordinary people have not done anything to the world. When they give people Nobel Prize, it's because they did extraordinary things. Hallelujah. And I want to challenge you tonight that there is a dimension in God that you can press into and you will access not just an anointing, an extraordinary anointing. There are many people who claim to be prophets in this country and you see that they, they are really called but they have not contended to those dimensions in God. They are prophets who look like pastors or deacons. No pressure to contend for the deep things of the spirit. I was studying the gospels and I started crying. You know why I cried? Because in Bible times, all people needed to do was to locate Jesus Christ. Or any environment where he was around. Whether or not they will be healed was not the issue. They knew that once they saw Jesus Christ. That was it. Powerful dimension of grace. At what level in the church. Will people say all I need to do. Take me to that place. When I get there. I will find God. When I get there. No matter what the problem is. There must be a solution. Right now, to get to a place where a man of God is, is only the first question answered. The second question is to hope. Hope that at least God will attend to me. And every time this is my cry, I say, Lord, don't send me if I'm going to be an ordinary person. Hallelujah. Someone spoke to me one day and said, Josh, I think you need to go on air. I said, me? I will never go on air until I have a message for the body of Christ. Are you hearing me? I'm not going to go on air and have somebody scroll my channel and say, wow, he's a nice man of God next. No, no, no. There's got to be something extraordinary. This is what I, I made up my mind that will never officially begin to record koinonia messages. Until there was something that was substantial enough for the body of Christ to have. 
There are many people writing books and tapes that are empty. They have no power and no ability. They are just psychological jargons. No power to change people. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Bible says, with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible says that he had the spirit without measure. And he went about doing good and healing all day that were oppressed of the devil. Acts 10, 38. I made up my mind that I was going to explore. See, can I tell you the truth? As far as I'm concerned, I've not started ministry yet. I feel very sad when I see a lot of people. They just say, I've been five years in ministry, seven years. I tell them, keep quiet. What is ministry? Ministry is representing God, being an ambassador. How much? What have you done? What mark have you made? When I begin ministry, the world will know. The Bible says, John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing. Many people just get up, they start churches, they gather people, they have no message. They have no nothing. What do you have that has not been heard before? The Bible says there is a path which no fowl knoweth, and a path which the feet of the lion has not trodden. Many men of God, what is happening in this country is just a repetition, copy and paste of spiritual things. There is no new. But the Bible says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. See, behold, I do a new thing. Hallelujah. Nelson Mandela became sick and he kept the world at a standstill. Christians, non-Christian, and everybody was praying. When Obama came, he had to go and visit him. Listen, this is, this is amazing. What made him an extraordinary leader? My, my first challenge for you tonight is that you must refuse to be ordinary in life. I want to challenge you. You must refuse. It's a determination. It's a decision. I refuse to be extraordinary. Call it pride. I don't care. Hallelujah. There is a level where you can get hold of an extraordinary anointing. It will produce an extraordinary ministry. It will produce an extraordinary life. Kenneth Hagin of blessed memory. A man who lived an extraordinary life. He had such a, a mighty anointing upon him. William Branham. I watched the video of Jaco. And they brought a lady who had cancer. Are you following me now? It was, it was a growth. It was swollen. I watched it. It's not like they told me. This guy held it and peeled it away. He was even sitting on a chair. He held it, peeled the cancer away. No blood. He was showing people. What is our boasting? What is our bragging for? I made up my mind I will never officially celebrate my birthday until I have a reason to celebrate. Birthdays is not a celebration of the day you were born. It was a celebration of, for what you are doing, what you were called to do, what you are living for. Are you listening to me? When I watch the videos of these people, I, I get broken. Mighty men! William Branham would move and because of the degree of anointing that was upon him, a hollow will move together with him. Catherine Kuman was so full of the Holy Ghost. She carried the anointing to a point that one time, on stage, she had crossed the stage, yet she was still floating. She didn't even realize it. Who through faith subdued kingdoms? Who are these men? Who are these strange breed of people that defied the ordinary status quo of their days and told themselves they were going to press? The difference between extraordinary, listen to me please, the difference between extraordinary and ordinary is that word, extra. Hallelujah. Every time I want to counsel people, I just say, Lord, are these people going to gather and I'll just waste their time? Or will they really receive something? Can I tell you something? 
the body of Christ is so frustrated. Many people are frustrated because preachers make a lot of mouth about things they have no anointing to defend. Hallelujah. A lot of preachers come and we brag and we make all kinds of noise. Oh, if God doesn't heal you, you don't have faith. Blah, 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 blah. And now the sick people come and they go back. And then they run to herbalists. And we have, we carry our big mouths and we criticize them. When the herbalist in a village is doing what a preacher has refused to do. And people are desperate for help, they will do anything. Including leaving your church or your ministry. And they will find solutions. Are you listening to me? Jesus climbed the mountain. A crowd followed him there. Jesus went to the wilderness. A crowd followed him there. He was in a room. The Bible says a whole city came and filled there. Men who knew that they were going to get substance. There is a lot of wastage happening in the body of Christ. Men and women of God. Just joking around and playing around. And the, the circumference of all what we call anointing. The moment a man of God's dream is to get to the point where you can touch somebody or blow air and somebody falls. It's enough demonstration to people that you are anointed. People fall down, get up and clean themselves. Nothing changes. Hallelujah. There are certain meetings in my life. I entered some of those meetings just once, but I will never forget. Hallelujah. Never forget. T.L. Osborne entered only one meeting. One meeting of William Branham. Just one. And it set him on fire forever. Just one. I told God, I said, Lord, the deadline for transformation in any life in Koinonia is two meetings. Two meetings. Every time I pray, I said, Lord... Let it not be that somebody will come for koinonia at least twice and not be changed. And you ask the person, how was service? Say, wow, it was nice. But that somebody will come and at the end of it, he cannot even talk. The person is just on his way going and you're saying, what happened? He said, I can't, I can't begin to describe. The impartation, I don't know if it was impartation I got or revelation I got. I don't know. I know that I got something. You'll be like a snake that swallowed something else. It can't move until after some days where you know that God is in this place. There are people seated here who are sick. There are people who are oppressed. And we men of God feel it's not an issue. And, and you know, shame on we preachers to an extent that whenever you see people being delivered and free, men of God begin to get angry and criticize. This is how much we are not even interested in the agenda of God. Someone gets free, someone gets delivered. See, let me tell you something. I made up my mind. The Bible says, he who walks with the wise shall be what? He who walks with the great shall be what? He who walks with the extraordinary shall be what? I love everybody, but I will not follow everybody. I am determined to make sure that a lot will be done for the kingdom of God in my lifetime. This is why there is no satisfaction. I've had one or two awards that were given to me. You will never find them on my table. Those things are deceitful. Very deceitful. Award that a few people just came together and said, take, you did this and that. You now place it and you are smiling and it's lying to you. See, when I was in secondary school, it was in a local government where you know many people were not even serious with their studies so we're the best we're the best school in that local government what we call local champion if we came for debate in your school just start crying by that standard hallelujah until we made up our minds one day 
to visit a school that was used to competing with people going state by state. That day, they showed us that the ceiling of somebody else can be the foundation of the next building. Hallelujah. When I came back, listen, when I came back from that debate, I was ashamed of myself. I ran to the state library. I had been the best student in my class until I tried writing jam maths. After five hours, I got four. Four. One, two, three, four. I checked the back of jam brochure. And they said there were certain people that got 300 and something. I said, Joshua Selma, you are joking. Many of us have lived in circles that have lied to us too much. We think the whole world is like our little community. Hallelujah. That's how many men of God are. They, they have surrounded themselves by, with psychophants and liars who make them feel they have every anointing in the world. Then one day you go and try something that you don't have grace for and you receive a root shock. Then you begin to say it's not true. This thing didn't work for me. Anybody that is doing it is not of God. This is fake. Shut up. That you are lazy and you are not pressing does not mean everybody has refused to press. There are people who will not stop. Are you listening to me? The price for an extraordinary anointing. There can be more than what you have seen. There can be more. There can be more. Many of us stopped pursuing God the day somebody fell down under the anointing. You don't know whether it was you or it was the person's prayer. You just know it happened around you. From that day, you were convinced. Whenever you go for meetings and they are ministering to people, you are waiting for them to say, ministers, come and lay hands. They say, ministers, you get up. What do you have? What do you have? How many? How many of it? He said, listen. He said, what do you have in your house? He said, I won't lie. I have something, but it's little. Sometimes you need to accept that you have, but what you have is not enough. The woman said, I have oil, but it's in a small cruise. The prophet said, all right, let me show you something that can expand the oil for you. She never would have believed that there can be more. Hallelujah. I get very, very, I get very disturbed when I see people go for meetings and to worsen the case, you want to see the disorganization of men of God wait until the anointing begins to break out in the meeting. Every man of God's body is itching him. Everybody wants to hold the mic. God has not finished or just wait. There, there, are, there are some people there at the back, at the back. All these, all these things we are doing. For 10 minutes you are talking. You are just, it's like starting a generator. Go and sit down. There are certain people, Catherine Kuman, before she got to the venue of the meeting, kilometers away, people started falling under the anointing. This is how they knew Catherine Kuman was coming. One time she finished the meeting and they were pressing her and they had to follow her through a kitchen door. The moment they opened the door, all the chefs, all of them were under the anointing until she passed. She was not praying. This was her default state. Hallelujah. Am I challenging you tonight? Sometimes when people call me to come and minister, as soon as I finish the ministration, I don't even want to hear any comments because I have to run. In my mind, I've left Zaria. In my mind, I've left Nigeria. I will not be fooled. The future of ENI is in that letter I, international. If you think what we have now is enough to feed the world, go and sit down. How many of you have seen people produce poster? And when you are seeing it on the laptop, you think that's the best poster you have produced. It's when you print it out and paste it, you see that it's as ordinary as the ones around. I refuse to be ordinary. There is a realm in God. Listen, can I tell you, when you hit that realm, you will start resting. You have entered the Sabbath of greatness. You will rest. Until you get to the seventh day, do not rest. I'm going to share with you four keys 
Number one. This is not what I'm just preaching. These are keys that I've made up my mind that they'll be part of my life. Can I tell you something? Look at me. God is challenging some of you tonight. Some of you have not backslided, but you have not you have stopped growing. You've not backslided, but you are there are many preachers in Nigeria that have stopped growing. They've not gone back, but they are in the same realm for a long time. It's just because where they have gotten to is, is substantially great. And it has been able to achieve one or two things. May your life produce a wonder that the world has not seen. May your life be the vehicle that God will reveal the more part of him that many people have not seen. Number one. You want to have an extraordinary anointing. The first price to pay is the price of consecration. The price of consecration. I will run very fast. Joshua 3 verse 5. The price of consecration. You don't hear this message is preached in church. Many people don't care. When I talk of consecration, I'm not just talking about running away from ladies. No, no, no. That's not even what I'm talking about. Consecration. To consecrate means to set apart. Consecration requires absolute surrender. Joshua 3 verse 5. Joshua 3 verse 5. If you want the Lord to do mighty things through your life, can we read it? One to read. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves. If you do that, what will happen? Tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. You want to see wonders in your life? The first key is the price of consecration. Consecration requires absolute surrender. Everybody say absolute surrender. You will never have the extraordinary anointing when you have your own agenda. You just want to use God's anointing to do your own agenda. Uh -uh. When God calls you, his first assignment is to kill you. You die to yourself, to your ambitions. Listen, you do not know the degree of surrender that brings authentic power and anointing. How many of you remember that gentleman, Sadiq Ibrahim? Some of you will remember him. He was right here in Koinonia. This guy wanted to be, he was in a group called Highlanders in Port Harcourt. Very serious occultic group. And he wanted the power of invincibility. He wanted to be able to do great things. When he met the Habalist, the Habalist told him, you have to consecrate yourself. For three days and three nights, he was lying down in a graveyard. His eyes did not see any man. I'm telling you how the devil gives people power. Three days, he said in the night, he will see people come out of graves and move. And you were not supposed to shift. They will touch him. He said, many of you do not know that the anointing comes with a price. That's why you see, when you talk against a man who is truly anointed, whether you are right or wrong, God will punish you. Are you listening to me? Absolute surrender. Consecration requires enduring the pain of being different. Oh, it's painful to be different. Let me tell you. It's painful to ride a different, a different plane of life. When everybody is going this way. When this is their definition of success. Moses was in the backside for 40 years. When his age mates were ruling in Egypt, he left the luxury of Egypt to prepare for an extraordinary ministry. 40 years! At the end of it, he came back to Egypt. He said, I'm ready. Oh, you can know you are ready. And it will not be pride. You can know you are ready. There is a time called the season of appearance. Are you, are you listening to me? Years ago, 
I hope I'll be able to share a few stories today about myself. Years ago, when I started preparing, when the Lord showed me the visions of the extraordinary things I'll be doing, in my mind I said, Lord, will people believe these things? And then the Lord began, sometimes the Lord will hold me in a room. Three days I've not come out. My eyes have not seen the light. Three days. I would stay there just praying. Sometimes sleeping, I would wake up and I would lie down. And a mist, like a cloud, will literally come into the room by the shape of a man. A real mist, I'm not talking of some metaphysics hallucination. If you are seeing it, you are seeing it. If it's like it is not there, you are either seeing it. This is Sam. This is music director. Hallelujah. I had very strange experiences. And I knew that this was a preparation for an extraordinary ministry. Many of you, this is what has been happening to you. Hallelujah. But nobody has told you. They've not encouraged you to know. Are you, are you listening to me? Many of you, you don't even know. And you are not serious because you started joining people. You now want to run and go and start a church or a fellowship. You've not even done anything. Ella, you'll be my secretary. Matilda, you'll be the PA. You are the one who will bath me. You are the one who will dress me. You will be going to the restaurant for me. Say, God gave me a commission. He said, now my son, arise and raise me a generation. Sit down. He said, arise from his perspective. See, let me tell you something about the word of God. God speaks from the realm of eternity. Everybody say eternity. He speaks from the realm of eternity. There is no time. So when the word comes to you, it comes with such a strong urgency, you think you should get up and go immediately. You must sit down and find the time component of every prophecy. That's why when prophets heard from God, they said, according to the time of life. Are, are you following me? Thank you, Jesus. It's painful to stand out. Listen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's painful to stand out. It's painful to be unusual. It's painful to be controversial. If you are not ready, forget about an extraordinary anointing. These are strange and rare people. That's why many people cannot make it to that list. They are too conscious of themselves. You must die to yourself to carry an extraordinary anointing. They will talk about you. They, we are speaking about Satan and Jesus at the same time. Two extremes. No matter, you will have to be in between two of them. Different in your life. Different in your mindset. There are ways they do things in your house. Now you make up your mind and say, no way. These sacrifices and this idolatry and the rest count me out. This is not going to be part of my life. I'm preparing for an extraordinary life. And people look at you. Say, so this thing has been there for how many years? Until the reward comes, you will look foolish. So let it not be strange to you. When you get to this realm, you will die to yourself. Literally. Everybody say the price of consecration. Many people do not like this. You know what? See, one of the biggest problems with the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, especially the American church, and now it's coming into Nigeria, we love comfort too much. Are you listening to me? The Holy Spirit is called the comforter. But listen, I need you to know that any sensible man knows that you don't get comfort from day one. When they give birth to a child, the first thing he receives is a slap. That's a sign to show that he's alive. Are you hearing me? Many people want pampering. We have built churches that want pampering. You say something that is striking. People say, we don't like this kind of preaching. No? We'll stop sowing into this ministry. And the man of God said, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll think of how to, to arrange it. May Koinonia never become the place that will water down truth because we are looking for money. Hallelujah. 
Everybody say the price of consecration. Before David was anointed, Psalm 89 said, I have found. Do you know what it means for God to find a man? The psalmist said, where can we hide from your presence? Yet God is saying, finally I found you. Because many people just want comfort. We want to use the anointing of God to accomplish our own agenda. And so the first thing is you must die to yourself and die to your agenda. I was listening to Benny Hinn. He was talking to some youths. And he was telling them, he said, look, you people do not know the price that brought this level of anointing to my life. He said, I don't know the, name of, the names of footballers. I don't know the names of music artists. He said one time his son asked him to take him to a basketball place. He said when he got there and he saw people jumping, he could not understand what they were enjoying. The anointing will change you. It will make you strange. People will say you didn't used to be like this. Where has your social life gone to? What happened? You will find it in the future. Give it up now. There are pastors who do visitation from Sunday to Sunday. Even Sunday morning, they quickly visit a rich man's house before they run to church. And then they believe that they are going to get an extraordinary ministry. And then many people now want methods. Young Cho went to preach somewhere. He pastors one of the largest churches in the world. Hallelujah. And many Americans just sat down with their notepad. They believe he was going to give them 31 guaranteed methods. You know, this is what we like now. Do this. Add A to B to C. This will happen. Young Cho came up. He doesn't speak English too well. Paraphrase him. He said, you people don't pray. You are not serious. You just sit down. You want the anointing. And he went and sat down. That was the end of his message. It was a prophetic rebuke. Authentic prophetic Bible type prophetic rebuke. Hallelujah. That was the message. He who had an ear in that meeting should hear. Go back to the secret place. We like methods. Right now we read all kinds of psychological books. Unbelievers are writing books to govern church ministry. How to attract a crowd. 20 quick ways. Guaranteed. And many gullible men of God who are lazy, just get up. You see them watching CDs. You would think it's something that will provoke them. A motivational speaker sits down. He says, when you come, start with a story. When you start with a story, use an example. When you do that, do this and that. You tried it, it didn't work because you are in Nigeria. Everybody say it. Nigeria. Nigerians have not been trained to tolerate nonsense. We are coming out from witchcraft straight. We are looking for something authentic. You don't come and tell people these jargons and junks. They will manage it for two days. They will laugh. We'll, we'll, when it gets bad, they will call you and say, Pastor, I sowed the seed. I prayed it's not working. If you don't respond to me by next week, you will see me in your church again. Hallelujah. The price of consecration. Listen. Every great man knows that you must give up something to go up. Did you hear what I'm saying? You must give up something to go up. Politicians know this. By 1 a.m., you are sleeping. A politician is in a harbourless house just to get little political office. What has made the body of Christ so lazy? I believe in seed faith. But let me tell you the truth. If you want an extraordinary life, it's beyond money. Are you listening to me? It's even beyond impartation. A time will come you must dig your own well. Your customized dealing with the spirit. When you get it, you will know those who are having what is not it. If you are the best student in your class and you see the dullest student getting 99, you know something happened. Because you know what you are doing that makes you the best. Hallelujah. Many believers cannot detect error because they themselves have not entered the substance. Hallelujah. The price of consecration. Revelations 18 verse 4. Revelations 18 verse 4.
powerful statement. He said, come out of her, my people, that you will not partake of her sins, that her plague will not come upon you. The Lord is speaking to his bride. He said, come out of her, my people. Come out of that status quo. Hallelujah. And I heard a voice, another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye not receive her plagues. Everybody say, I'm coming out. Refuse it. Refuse it. You want to be a man of God? You better, some of you are attracted at their vanities. You, you spend day and night browsing church structures. You believe that is how to be in ministry. Hallelujah. Browsing church structures. And then you finish, you say, this is the car. And you gum it in your room and keep speaking it. The car that will carry me. Look, let me tell you something. Faith is not foolishness. Sit down and pay the price and tell the Lord, search my heart. There are tendencies. I don't know how it will be the day I see 500 members who are loyal to you and can open up their spirit. The price of consecration. You cannot want to live like any other person. I say it with all humility. You will not find me around just gallivanting around. You say, what are you doing? Say, today is a happy day. I just feel like strolling. I'm at the season of my life where I am still at the preparation stage for an extraordinary life. The moment I finish preaching in Koinonia, I run back and lectures continue. I'm in the school of the spirit. No amount of manifestation will stop it. When I go home, I just get on my knees and I say, Lord, I thank you for what you did. I thank you for the mighty things that happened. And the Lord says, let's continue. Well done, but let's continue. The journey is still far. Everybody say, I choose to sanctify myself. Say it, I choose to sanctify myself. There are many things that take our attention in the body of Christ. Computer games. Some of you is movies. You can watch movies from morning. You only stop to eat lunch. Immediately you finish. Which part? Which part? Did I watch that guy? Has, has a lady finally told him yes? Which part? You just come and sit down. The food will burn there. Later I say, off it for me, please. And they ask you, say, what do you want to become? Say, like Benny Hinn. Huh? Hallelujah. An extraordinary life. Listen, let me tell you. You must prepare for an extraordinary life. That's why oftentimes God will separate people away. He took Moses in the wilderness. He was alone. The price of consecration. Second Timothy 2. The last scripture. Let's run. Verse 19 to 21. The Bible says, Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The next verse says, But in a great house, there are not only vessels, listen, not only vessels of gold and silver, but vessels of wood and clay, or some versions say earth. It says, Some are unto honor. That means it's your choice. There are vessels in a great house, but not every vessel is unto honor. He says, Some are unto honor, and some are unto what? Dishonor. Here's the condition. He says, If a man will purge, separate, consecrate, sanctify himself, he said, That man will be a vessel unto honor, meet, fit, prepared, equipped for the master's use. Say, I'm a vessel unto honor. The price of consecration. The price of consecration. There are many of you, every time you hear the word price, you don't like it. Let's drink ice cream. Hallelujah. Do you have money? No, 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 no. Don't mention it. We, we hate anything that has to do with price. The Bible says, Romans chapter 8 from verse 18. It says, I reckon, I come to terms with this fact that the sufferings of this present time 
is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. That's what the Bible says. I reckon that the sufferings, that means there are temporary setbacks. The sufferings of this present time. What time? The time of your preparation. It's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. Verse 19 says, For the earnest expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Number two, the price of revelation and real intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You want an extraordinary anointing? This is the second price. The price of revelation. The price of revelation and real intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You will never be able to live an extraordinary life. You can never have an extraordinary ministry. If you do not know the person of the Holy Spirit and you do not have revelation. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 to 19. Paul began to pray and say for this cause. I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom. And revelation in the knowledge of him. 18 says. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That ye may know. Enlightenment. You want to be great in life. You must go for knowledge. You must go for knowledge. You must go for knowledge. Are you hearing me? You must go for knowledge. You can't be great in ignorance. No. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. It says my people perish for lack of knowledge. Satan is only as powerful as our ignorance will allow him. Success is very predictable when you understand the laws that govern it. Knowledge. Many of us don't go for revelation. You don't contend. You must become a student of the Bible. If you want an extraordinary anointing. Are you listening to me? You must become a student. Not just a recipient. Many of us want things from God. But we are not serious with the word of God. How amiable are your word, O oh Lord. They are my meditation all day long. I'm obsessed with the word of God. I think the word of God. My conversations are governed after the word. And I'm not just doing it to preach. If you are just preparing sermons, people will know. You can't pretend it forever. He said, thy word, O oh God, have I hidden in my heart. This is how you prepare for an extraordinary life. Be full of the word. Be full of the word. Be full of the word. You want an extraordinary life? Get back to the Bible. Go and sit down. Beyond morning devotion. My son, pay attention to my words. Proverbs 4. Incline your ears to my sayings. The Bible says. Do not let them depart from out of thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He said they are life to those who find them. That means not everybody is interested. But they are life to those who find them. And health to their flesh. The Bible says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Hebrews 11 from verse 1. The Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. He said, For by it, the elders obtained a good report. The Bible says, Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The worlds were framed by the word of God. The price of revelation. People who are extraordinarily anointed are men of the word. When you see a man who is anointed, when I talk of the word, I'm not talking of quoting the word. You will know they submit to the governing authority of the word. Being a student of the word is not just about talking it. There is a way you, you submit. Like you submit to a man. You have submitted to the authority of the word. Many of us read the word, but we have not submitted. To submit to the word of God means the word of God becomes the final opinion in your life. No matter what your argument is, when they bring the word of God, it ends every contention. John 5, 7, Jesus speaking. He says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you. Very important. 
His word must abide in you. Hallelujah. He says you will bear much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Hallelujah. John 16 verse 13. Let's look at, I'm just giving you these scriptures. John 16 verse 13. Can you look at it very quickly? John 16. God is changing somebody tonight. He said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. Listen, let me tell you something. Koinonia is called intimacy and partnership. The first thing is intimacy. You must contend for the knowledge of the Holy Spirit. It is in the knowledge of the Holy Spirit that you experience the gifts of the Spirit in your life. You cannot have the gifts of the Spirit and the anointing of the Holy Spirit independent of His presence. When He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into how many? That means there are many truths. He will guide you into all of them. It says, For He shall not speak of Himself, but who whosoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you he will show you hallelujah very important let me show you something jesus said john 14 verse 10 john 14 verse 10 the second prize the second key to an extraordinary anointing i just have four of them john 14 verse 10 Believest thou not that I am in the Father? Now, this was Jesus doing extraordinary works. And these people were dumbfounded. And they wanted the secret of his power. Listen to what he was saying. He says, and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you. He said, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. The Holy Ghost. That source and sustainer that lives in me. He said, he doeth the works. Every time you see a mighty man doing things, he's not the one doing it. There is somebody behind. I was not born like this. I wasn't born this way. That's my sister. My blood sister. I wasn't born this way. It takes a commitment and a determination. Go for revelation. It's too early to start looking for manifestation. You are at the stage of preparation. No matter how great you are. If you can become, no ma even if they make you a pastor of a church, don't let titles make you graduate yourself from the school of the spirit. Go and sit down. Pastor Femi is here. He's the senior pastor in Rema. And you come and sit down quietly. There are many people having his position now who start running. You must learn to sit down. Don't allow the applause that men are giving. Don't let it see. Don't let it take you away from the school of the spirit. Hear me tonight. There is more. It's time to eat because the journey is far. The angel told the prophet, he said, eat for the journey is far. He ate a little and he slept. The angel woke him again. He said, eat for the journey is far. And the Bible says he ate and he went in the strength of that bread, a 40 days journey. Number three. You want to see an extraordinary anointing in your life. The price of total obedience. Total obedience. Total obedience. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. For time's sake, we will not read it. Just read 5 to 10. Specifically verse 8. If you can project that verse 8. Shut up, Allah, parada. Sense the anointing of the spirit in this place. Philippians 2 verse 8. The Bible says, I'm being found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became what? Obedient even unto death. Can I tell you something? There is a way you can be obedient that it will cost you. Are you listening to me? You must make up your mind whether you want to obey God or you want to obey men. It will cost you. It's called obedient unto death. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2. It says it shall come to pass. If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. To do and observe all that I command you this day. That these blessings, uh, you know, I, I, will, I will exalt you. shall be above all nations. And this blessing shall come to you and overtake you. Then it begins to list downwards. 
Hallelujah. Very important. Matthew 7, the Bible says, He that heareth my words and doeth them. Not he that heareth my word and just dances. No. Obedience, 24 to 25. Matthew 7, 24 to 25. It's like it to a wise man that built his house upon the rock. I want to challenge you. Many of you, the reason why God is not working with you is because you don't have a heart to obey God. There are some of you here, the day God asks you to empty your account, you will bind and cast and lose and curse. And even write it as a prayer request. That voice that likes taking what God has given me. Obedience. Obedience. Everybody say obedience. Obedience will cost you. Obedience will cost you. They can give you a ministration somewhere. There are great ministrations that I have been given and the Lord says no. No. I just tell the protocol, no, I'm not going. I don't need to tell lies and say, okay, something, uh -uh. I, I'm not going to go. I remember one time, there was a pastor who invited me and I was praying. At the same time, there was an NCCF meeting in Delta. And for three days, I kept seeing myself there. And I had to call him because I had given him my word. They were so excited. They were preparing. I said, Pastor, I'm sorry to tell you, but the Lord wants me to be, the Lord wants me to be in Delta. The pastor was so sad. In his mind, he would say, so because my church is now not as big as a state conference, that's why you are not coming. No, not at all. I paid my transportation. I went there. And at the end of it, when I got there, the Lord told me, you are not collecting an honorarium. When they bring it, bless it and give them back. So it was not just, it was not for money at all. Obedience. Hallelujah. I've shared it. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not necessary. It's not something I'll say now. But somebody brought a huge gift for me one time this year. And when he brought it, I just looked at him. And I told him, I said... Mm -mm. As he was, he was trying to offer me, I said, no way. Already God had told me no. How many of you can say no when God says no? How many of you can say yes when God says yes? You are afraid of being different. You are afraid of being criticized. You are not ready for an extraordinary anointing. Because one day, God will tell you to declare his counsel. And the fear of what men will say. Let me tell you something. Extraordinarily anointed people are stubborn people. They are men that can defy things. I don't mean rebellious. Mary said, whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. Someone met me one day and said, don't you think meeting once a week is too small for koinonia? I looked at the person, I said, back to sender. We don't do things just because we want to do it. No. As you see upon the mount, then you will do. If you do what God did not direct, you will defend it by yourself. Hallelujah. Obedience to the principles of the word. Obedience to the voice of the spirit. Many of us, when we started with God, one of the things that made our spiritual journey well was because we were living by the principles of God. Many of us are waiting for a word from God or a vision or a supernatural experience but you are not obeying the truth of God's word that you are seeing you want extraordinary finances you are not tithing you are not giving you see somebody coming every week to give tithe say are, are you sure this guy is not pretending it? are you the only one God is blessing <laughs> the performance is for obedient people the performance is not just for hearers Make up your mind to obey the word. No matter what it will cost you. Hallelujah. The last scripture there. Jeremiah 7.23 Jeremiah 7.23 God is separating people in this place to give them extraordinary anointings. He said, but this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God. 
and ye shall be my people. He said, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. You want it to be well with you, it will be on the wings of obedience. Hallelujah. Years ago, after we came back from our crusade, it was a powerful time. PFN called us and they said, we want you to come and establish a branch of your ministry. They were ready to give us an auditorium and give us pastors to train. I was excited. I went to the Lord. The Lord just answered me and said, you will die. That was exactly what I repeated to the people. I said, the Lord said, I will die. obedience it's difficult to obey when you are going to lose a lot it's easy to obey when the obedience is on to gaining something immediate obedience I choose to obey the word I choose to live by its truth number four there are many of you who have done this three but the fourth key is what you have missed. The price of consistency. The price of consistency. The price of consistency. Look at me. Everybody. How many of you have seen someone cutting a tree? Do you know that if you keep hitting that tree, it looks like nothing is happening. There is one final hit that will cut the tree. That was not the strongest heat. It was the most consistent one. Are you listening to me? Many of us, listen, and let me tell you something. One of the greatest lessons, or yes, one of the greatest lessons that the Lord has taught me in this life is that it pays to wait upon the Lord. Impatience has cheated many people out of the blessings of God in this life. We are in a hurry for everything. Everybody say the price of consistency. Consistently doing the same thing. Regardless of the outcome. Regardless of the outcome. You tie it and you don't see the blessing. You say, I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. I know that God is behind his word. Great people in life are those who have done certain things consistently. Galatians 6 verse 9 Do not be weary in well doing. He said for we will reap in due season if we faint not. Do not be weary in well doing. He said and let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap. Everybody say I will reap. Some of you have been coming for koinonia again and again. Six months, things have not changed. Do not be wary. If it is what you are doing well, don't be wary. The Bible says you will reap because you are sowing. The only way the devil can kill your harvest is to stop you from sowing. The Bible says, He that sows unto the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal. In 1 Kings 18, from verse 30 to 46, we will not read it, just write it down. 1 Kings 18, verse 30 to 46. The Bible says, Elijah prayed seven times. Everybody say seven times. If Elijah stopped at the sixth time, it would not work. He had to pray how many times? In fact, the Bible is so graphic. It says he prayed the first time. He sent the servant, go and check. The man said, nothing will consistency is what separates ordinary people and extraordinary people consistency consistency you pray no matter the outcome you study the word no matter the outcome consistency many of us when we are at the edge you are at the verge of a breakthrough that's when many of us give up Hallelujah. In 2 Kings chapter 5, you read from verse 1 to 4, but let's just focus on verse 4. 2 Kings 5. 
the Bible says, the prophet had told Naaman, he said, if you want to be clean, go and dip yourself. How many times? Seven times. Naaman was complaining and grumbling. It didn't change him. The Bible says, ah, I thought they were protecting it. Hallelujah. Naaman dipped himself how many times? Don't worry, just do your work, media. Seven times. Do you know what it means to dip yourself? Many of you were baptized. They dip you only once. Imagine a great man. He entered the water. He entered and came out. He asked the slave girl, how many? She said, one. Do it again. He entered, came out. At the fourth time, he was already embarrassed. He was looking like mud. God said seven times, Mr. Man, consistency. Consistency. There are many of you, you are looking for a prophet to prophesy to you. Nobody comes. God says, just continue doing what you are doing. That's the only prophetic word you need. Keep doing it. Pastor Chris will say what? How, how does he say? It? Keep speaking it. Don't stop saying it. Be consistent. Some of you start preparing for an extraordinary life. And impatience will just cancel it out. How, and you know, see, it's dangerous because when you start a journey, you get to a point where you are in the middle. You, it's too far for you to go back and then you can't reach there. Many of us start the journey and you go back. You are traveling to Abuja. You've now gotten to Abuja Kaduna Expressway. And you say, Kai, this journey is too far. I went to Meduguri on, on road. I slept and woke up. I don't know how many times. I asked the driver how many more hours. He said six or seven. I said, what? We've been on this journey since. I had to sleep on the road. But did that mean we were missing the way? See, that you have to wait does not mean you made a wrong decision. Continue. John 6 verse 15. I mean Joshua 6 verse 15. The crossing of Jericho. Joshua 6 verse 15. The Bible says on that seventh day you can imagine to throw a big wall god gave them an instruction they went round once the people in jericho were wondering who are these madmen they had to die to themselves to know that whatever god tells you to do it will work on the seventh day they now started going one two three four five madness six at the seventh time, they blasted the trumpet. And the Bible tells us, see, the wall of Jericho did not fall down. It sank. Because the Bible says on the wall, five chariots could stand on it. So even if it falls, it will become another wall again. Sank. John 20, verse 11. When I was preparing these notes, I just put all these scriptures and the Holy Spirit told me, no, there's one more. My people must hear. John 20 verse 11. The Bible says when Jesus resurrected, all the disciples came and the one Jesus loved checked the tomb and they saw that Jesus was not there. They checked once and they ran away. But the Bible says Mary Magdalene stayed there. Everybody say consistency. And when she checked again, suddenly she saw an angel. consistency consistency requires patience it requires uncommon patience it requires grace hallelujah many people in ministry they start and then god is telling them just be consistent don't compromise don't compromise teach your message it may not be popular but don't compromise if, do you know that is impatience and lack of consistency that makes people to derail from the things of God and get into witchcraft they are looking for fast fast fame, fast everything they want a jeep fast fast jeep one of the greatest revelations that God has put in me is the beauty of patience I can wait I've killed hurry from my life. I can wait. Some of you are in a hurry for everything. And this is your unbecoming. 
you are in a hurry to you want digital hearing God now. Let you just say thank you, Jesus. And God just begins to talk. Five minutes later, he has finished. You say, I give you praise. Unfortunately, his system is not like that. They that wait. Hallelujah. Very important. Consistency. These four things are the things that I practice in my own life every time. And I'm determined not to stop it. This last one is probably new to many people. You are just seeing the power of consistency. Consistency. When you want to build a house, the workers come every day. They put three blocks today. Tomorrow they come again. They add four blocks. I was checking the database of Koinonia and I found out we're getting close to 5,000. The database, people who have been blessed, who have come to worship. I remember when we started it, 20 people, new people, 40 people, 20 people today, 100 people, 60 people, 400 people. Consistency. Everybody say consistency. I play a bit of keyboard. When I started, I was fairly consistent. And then I stopped being consistent. Do I like keyboard? Yes. Am I blessed by it? Yes. Can I play like I can? No. Why? You are not consistent. You see why many people are not consistent in God's presence. That's why they don't know when God speaks a thing. Consistency. Consistency. That's why we have a lot of people who are not stable with spiritual things. You run to this man of God today, Abuja or Lagos or wherever. You say, man of God, my life must change. He said, come and sit down under the word. Two weeks later, I say, man of God, it has not changed though. He said, just continue. He said, oh, let me find one that can give this thing to me sharp, sharp. Many of us have entered into all kinds of things. All kinds of things. Everybody say, I will, I will continue in the things that I've started. Consistency. Let's do a quick review. Number one, the price of consecration. The price of consecration. Number two, the price of revelation. Consecration will kill you. You will take up the agenda of God and forget about your own agenda. There are some of you who finish service. You want to run and go for work. God will say, uh-uh. For you, you are exempted. The normal law is to look for a job. You, you are exempted. You are a lady, you finished. You are just planning. Thank God I will get married. God will say, uh-uh. You are going to marry in the next three years. Give me these three years of your life. Say, back to sender. I've always known. Enemy of progress. Now that is my breakthrough. It's my turn to shine. consecration. You must die to yourself. You can't do everything. There are many of us, every program secular or Christian, you are there. Something happens in TJ Palace, you come. You are happy. You just sit down there. Later I say, Kai, it's time for fellowship. Let me run. And you, you wonder why your ears is as if they put cotton wool inside. You can't hear God. You always hear nonsense. Samuel had the voice of God because he was lying down close to the ark. If you lie down close to the ark, you will hear the voice of God. An extraordinary life. I'm saying this today because it will happen by the Spirit. He and I will be an extraordinary ministry. I won't be. I have come to the end of my sin. Take over, Jehovah, I have touched the end of my son. Listen, don't be in a hurry in your life. Stop following the plan that people have carved for themselves to define success. You will fall into a ditch you may not recover from. Receive the blueprint. 
when you see your life becoming strange it's a sign that there is an uncommon call upon your life endure it it's working for others but when god gets to you you will train others and raise them but you god will say sit down there is a reason you are coming to the end of yourself i remember one man who god instructed and said until he buys 15 cars for people before he buys one for himself at the end of the third car the wife told him see i'm going to leave you i've been keeping quiet about this thing it's paining me because people started embarrassing the woman they say something is wrong with your husband and you are a foolish woman you won't go and do something about it 15 that was the instruction god gave him this guy will walk like an elephant and carry money and buy car a Jimmy's mother of blessed memory before she went to be with the lord she was preparing to buy a nice car for herself and then the lord gave her an instruction that she should buy a brand new toyota corolla and go and give one of her junior staff how many people will slap you when you do that kind of thing ladies if your husband comes and says honey come and give me a hug first and a kiss and you feel he say what what is it i can't wait he said god has spoken he say all right sit down now we are going to evacuate this house here the spirit of god the house that you built with your own money they will call you from the village quick they'll say come back home before you come home they are prepared what will recover you from that mindset they'll say just drink this before we start talking because you are not well mad men are the ones who have changed this world uncommon people uncommon people uncommon people some of you have to trek long distances to come for koinonia every week but you are determined consistency go for revelation stop doing cheap ministry you will start insulting great people don't join that group stay with the spirit until you catch a substance of life when you have a message i promise you the world will hear you forget about money chase god you will find other things he said but seek ye first the kingdom seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all other things a time will come if somebody pays you one million per week he has insulted you you hold on if you can endure he that endures to the end not stop at the middle if you start a race a marathon and you're running assuming you're supposed to go around zaria you started from abu you are almost coming and you are at, you are at um, energy research and you collapse there will they say hey yeah we understand we saw your effort we'll be watching you when they list the names of those who are disqualified they will put your name there so the person who just started from here to aviation and stopped and you you have now been put in the same class everybody say i'll be consistent say i'll be consistent pray in tongues it's too early to pray and start saying oh i'm looking it's something mm -mm. koinonia is where we are today because we have been consistent for four years god trained us were coming every night people were sitting on the floor pastor williams and his wife with the kids sometimes will come all the way from sabo married people they will come and sleep in the students hostel they are looking for something tomorrow now somebody will see him and the wife will say how are we sure this woman said she's just chopping ripping where she didn't so somebody spoke against um catherine Ma maria woodward eater she said the lord judge you the person's tongue became like banana until he wrote an official letter of apology and she slapped it back hallelujah i was told was it oedeko or, or adeboe that somebody saw the things that they were doing and the woman just hissed and trivialized it oedeko that woman was barring for i don't know how many years from the story one time she went to a prophet searching for solution the man wanted to pray for her and he said stop god is revealing to me that you have offended a great man of god this is what is responsible she called the name the woman packaged a seed don't worry those who are talking against you will sow into your life for recovery from their madness tomorrow just continue
anytime you see a great man, I was, I was speaking to my sister, you know, she was over at my place and I was talking to them. And I was telling them something. I said, one of the greatest things I've learned in life, listen to me. See, if you try to defend yourself, hear me, you are, God, God doesn't have anything to do again. Are you listening to me? There are many of us, they just, you just pray for five hours. You want to explain to everybody. Ah, ah. Be convinced about this. At every point of your life, those who love you are greater than those who don't. Don't lose touch with those who truly love you and be focusing on a few people. Out of the twelve, it was only Judas who didn't love Jesus, not eleven. Jesus focused on the people who loved him. Some of us want who loves me. Do you like me? Do you don't like me? Do you don't like me? You say, why now? Let me, let me make you like me. Ah. Extraordinary people are lonely people. Lonely people. Until they arrive. And then everybody will see Moses was alone. They didn't come for visit for him. They didn't send any bounty from Egypt. They thought he was dead. But when God was done with him, he became a sign and a wonder. Are you ready to pray tonight? Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet. We are going to cry to the Lord. The Lord is calling you into an extraordinary anointing. Into an extraordinary anointing. We are going to pray for just five minutes. And we will round up. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Everyone hold your hands together and let's pray in tongues for just one minute. There's a realm. A realm of the extraordinary. The realm of champions. That's where world changers dwell. Is a mountain where the eagles dwell, not where the birds are, not where the chickens are. It's a pedestrian, it's a plane in the spirit. It's the place for mighty men, it's the place for great men, writers of history, history makers, world shakers. Ambassadors indeed, men whom the earth is not worthy of. Come on, pray. Point number one, Lord, I refuse an, extra, an ordinary life from today. I make a vow and a commitment. I will not be ordinary. Go ahead. Not in business. Not in leadership. Not in my job. Not in ministry. I contend for an extraordinary anointing. I refuse to be average. Not in ministry. An extraordinary healing ministry, an extraordinary deliverance ministry, an extraordinary preaching ministry, an extraordinary apostolic ministry, pray, an extraordinary prophetic ministry, extraordinary evangelical ministry, pray, I will be an extraordinary worshiper, an extraordinary worshiper, an extraordinary worshiper. An extraordinary businessman. Tell yourself. I am destined to be great. My parents may not know it. Pray. The people in my community may not know it. But I'm determined. I refuse. I refuse the ordinary. I refuse the ordinary. My name will be written in the sands of time. 
that I did terrible things in righteousness. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You are going to pray all of these four things. Grace to pay the price for consecration. Grace to pay the price for revelation and intimacy. Grace to pay the price for obedience. Grace to be consistent. You know where you have been, we have been faulting. Lift your voice and pray. Grace, oh God. Grace. 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 Shekete koto palatapa. Repos koparyadaba. Grace to separate myself from the cares of this world. Grace not to entangle myself with the lusts and appetites that hinder the anointing. Grace, lift your voice and cry. Shake prosko prekete kala. Man protosko maria. Grace to live a sanctified life. Grace to live a life that is set apart. Grace, grace. Pay the price. Pay the price. Lamentation Street 27. It is good that a young man bear his youth, his, his, his yoke in his youth. Pray for grace. Lift your voice and pray. Grace for revelation. Grace for revelation. Say, Lord, grace to be a student of the world. I will buy books. I will buy tapes. Day and night. Day and night. I will sit with the world. Day and night. I will sit with the world. Pray for intimacy with the Holy Ghost. Tell yourself, Holy Spirit, I'm tired of pretending like I know you. I want to enter a tangible experience. I want to hear your voice. I want to walk with you. Koinonia. I long for that intimacy. Pray for grace to obey. Lift your voice and pray for grace. Grace to obey. Lord, I've been disobedient. Lift your voice and pray. Grace to obey. No matter what it will cost you, you will be different. They will mock you. They will criticize you. Every great man followed that path. You are not the first. You will not be the last. Enjoy it. Pass through it. Enjoy it. Pass through it. When you become great, your life will explain the process. Pass through it. Make up your mind to obey God. Be uncompromising. No matter what it will cost you. Finally, pray for consistency. Consistency. Some of you stop doing the things that brought you to this realm. That's why you've not gone higher. Lift your voice and pray. Consistency. I will stop fasting. I will stop fasting. I will stop praying. No. No. Nothing will make me stop fasting. Nothing will make me stop praying. I will stay with the word. I will read books. I will watch videos. I will spend time in worship. I will build myself. I will develop myself. I will learn from great people who have gone ahead of me. I will give my eyes no sleep until I do the things that will move me forward. No matter the commendations, I will let it get into me. I make up my mind to be consistent, to be consistent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a secret. This is a secret. There is nothing mysterious about it. An extraordinary anointing. Hallelujah. An extraordinary anointing. This is the secret to an extraordinary anointing. Lift your hands in one minute. I want to pray with you. Sit up on Lift your hands, everybody. I want to pray that grace will come upon you. 
and make you walk in these realms. For many of you, this grace will come upon you in a mighty way. In a mighty way. I want you to carry an anointing that will destroy spiritual laziness. As I count seven, that grace will come. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Take it now. 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 I release it. Receive it. That fire. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Let it come upon you. Grace. Extraordinary ministry. Extraordinary anointing. Take it like fire. Holy Ghost. Move in power. Move in power. Outside. Outside. Let the power of God move. Grace. Oh, Let the fire burn. Let it ignite you. Take it, 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 take it. Take it. Be separated. Let the desire for the ordinary die. Let the desire for the ordinary receive it. It will come upon you like rain, like rain, like rain. Second take of photo For an extraordinary anointing. For an extraordinary life. Zetapata. Zetapata. May you command results. May you command results. Results that can be reproduced again. May you see the power of God in your ministry. May you see the power of God in your life. I bless you with a hunger for spiritual things. Hunger that will separate you from fainting. You've not given your life to Jesus Christ. Listen, some of you, this is where it starts. Tonight, God is calling men to be serious. Hear me, inside and outside. There are some of you, every time you hear the word of God like this, you don't take what the man of God is saying seriously. God has been speaking to you. God has been speaking. Don't let today pass you by. There are some of you who gave your life to Christ. But truly you are not serious with God. You are not serious with his word. You are not serious with his life. The things of God are not, you are, you are not on fire. Tonight God is calling you. I'm going to count one to five. And I want you to come and stand here. You've never given your heart to the Lord quickly. One, come and stand. God is speaking to you. Nobody will force you. Once I count five, just remain on your seat. Two, enough of this ordinary life. There is a higher realm. There is an extraordinary anointing. Inside or outside, let, it, let the distance not be too far. Young or old, God brought you here tonight. God brought you here tonight. Some of you are sitting. The Holy Ghost is telling you, come out. The Holy Ghost is telling you, you are the one. You are the one the preacher is talking about. The Holy Ghost is talking to you. Quickly, please, let's save time. The Holy Ghost has been speaking to you. Be serious with your spiritual life. Take the things of God. You have a great destiny. Many of us listen, but we are yet to make a, de a decision. Keep coming. God bless you. One minute, quickly. Don't let anybody mock you. Don't let people tell you you are over spiritual. That's nonsense. The people who are saying that will be failures in life. Guaranteed. Don't be ashamed to be on fire. That's the way great people are made. I 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those of you in front here, I congratulate you for coming. Some of you are making your decision. Sister, you will, you will enter a level of hunger and fire. Today is your day. It's God's time to visit you in a mighty way. Hallelujah. We're out of time. Listen, let me encourage you. Don't do what you are doing now emotionally. Please. Some of you will do it now when you go outside and you see your unbelieving people who have no respect for the things of God. You get ashamed. Ashamed? Let me pray for you. All of you in front here, if you can, lift your hands up and let me pray with you. I love you. Thank you for coming. You are not ashamed. I tell you, this will be the beginning of an authentic spiritual journey. I'd like you to shout it like your life depends on it. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I'm tired of going on this journey by myself. This night, I make a genuine commitment to walk with Jesus. Forgive me my sins. I receive the remission of sins. From today, I'm a child of God. I'm saved. Put your fire in my spirit. Make my life meaningful. Give me an extraordinary life. Use me for your glory. I denounce sin and Satan. I break free from associations that keep me in the former life. I declare that I'm a child of God in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for these ones. They have come to indicate their interest to be part of your kingdom and to be very serious with you. My God, I pray that from today, let their lives change. Let something remarkable happen. Let habits be broken. In the name of Jesus, the Lord forgives you. We free you from any guilt. I set you free. In the name of Jesus Christ. No matter what has happened in the past, past is past. Hallelujah. You're a new creation in Christ. You will start again with the Lord. In Jesus' name. Now, tomorrow, listen. Tomorrow evening, by 5 please look at me by five all right pastor jakes will be meeting with all of you please try try as much as possible just at the chapel book stand just come there and find somewhere and wait there pastor jakes will meet with you people we are going to follow you up for those who are not feeling the holy ghost who get to feel the holy ghost you can get some of the messages with the media some of you who don't have our messages they are all free we don't sell messages for now get them and sit down with them and let them build you. God bless you. Please follow the ushers. They'll have your details right now. Congratulations. Just give me two minutes and we're out of here. Those worshiping with us for the first time, please, I'd like you to leave your seat and come quickly. We honor you. We thank you for coming. Very quickly, very quickly. Those worshiping with us for the first time, if this is your first time of being here, we love you. We salute you. Please leave your seat and come out here. I have a prayer and a blessing for you. Koinonia, celebrate them as they come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Koinonia, celebrate them. Whether you're inside or outside, just make haste to be here. Thank you, young and old. Don't be afraid. We have a prayer for you. You'll never be the same. Thank you for coming. God brought you by himself. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, thank you so much for coming. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. Put together by Eternity Network International. I assure you that your life will never be the same. Hallelujah. A fire will come into your spirit. You will change. Everyone around you will know you are changed. May you experience the goodness of God in your life. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you. Thank you because you brought my brothers and sisters. Thank you because you have visited them tonight. Let this be the beginning of an authentic, never-ending spiritual journey. I bless you with a hunger for the things of the Spirit. I bless you with a hunger for the Word. I command breakthrough in any area of your life you're trusting God for. Anyone who is sick among you, be healed right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name.
in Jesus name thank you for coming God bless you please just follow the ushers they'll have your details and you'll be back to your seat God bless you hallelujah I appreciate them coming on here hallelujah let's take the following announcement dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye